Okay, so again po, no, good morning po sa ating lahat. Ako po muli si LJ Ori, siya si Tamayer from the DALG Mima Ropa Region. And uh, welcome po sa ating rule out training on the guidelines for um, local economic development and workforce development plan. So again po, no, this is a three-day activity that we'll be uh, doing po for the next three days. So before po we start, just some uh, reminders po ulit no, for everyone. And yun nga po, um, we request po our onboarded participants to, uh, if maybe po, no, um, communicate po natin yung ating mga colleagues. No? Uh, we request po that uh, we share po no, that we're already starting po with our activity Today. So first po is to kindly change your username uh, using the format flashed on your screen. So just put po yung in yung LGU. Uh, so para po sa ating mga ano, no, uh, target participants, province of Palawan, Rojas, Palawan, and Calapan City. And then followed po ng inyong full name. So kagaya po ng nasa ating screen. And then second po, uh, let us uh, watch lang po no, if yung ating pong mic ay na-accidentally unmute po ba? So uh, we don't ano po, um, distract ourselves po no, from the session. So kindly mute your microphone lang po and you may turn on your video uh, during open forum and kapag po picture po tayo later but you may opt to turn it off po to save our bandwidth. And third po, very important is to log in uh, using our attendance form na shinare po ng ating training management team. Diyan po sa ating Zoom chat box, yung clickable link. So meron po tayong log in and log out per day. So just select po yung November 22 and then log in for this morning and then November 22 log out for later po no this afternoon after po ng lahat ng ating sessions. The same po for tomorrow and then sa ating third day. So very important po ito because this will be our sole basis um, for issuing po yung ating certificate of participation. And uh, lastly po, ayan, naka-flash din po yung ating pre-test link, which is the same link po ng ating attendance form. Hopefully po, no, while waiting, ay nasagutan na po natin yan. Very important po yan para naman po mabigyan kami ng feedback kung uh, ano po no, yung uh, matututunan pa namin sa ating uh, rollout. And of course, since we value knowledge sharing, we'll be giving everything po no, na gagamitin nating references or presentation materials or other relevant documents uh, during the course of our three days. So yan po ay matatagpuan sa bit.ly led WDP ref at yan clickable link po ay isisend din sa ating uh, Zoom chat box. Alright po? And makikita po natin dyan, yun nga po yung ating presentation materials. Um, and then meron din po dyan yung ating mga workshop templates for our upcoming workshops as well as dyan po namin na-upload yung ating mga certificates for those nga po na nakaka-accomplish um, nga po ng ating attendance form. Alright? So yan po. You may uh, refer to this link and to this toolkit for the rest of our activity. So, tingnan naman po natin if um, game na game na po ba tayo or kasama na po natin yung ating mga uh, gusto pong uh, makasama ng mga participants po for our three days. So, again nga po no, yung ating pong target participants ay of course Calapan City, Province of Palawan, and Rojas Palawan. And hopefully po kasama po natin ang ating mga local administrators, uh, ating pong uh, mga sanggunian members, local treasurer, Public Employment Service Officer or yung atin pong mga peso. Ayan, very important po yan. Community Training and Employment Coordinator. Ang atin pong Local Tourism Officer. Ang atin pong mga Local Agriculture Officer. Ang atin pong mga LEDI po. At um, some representatives po sa ating private sector if available. And of course po ang ating mga um, kasamahan from the DALG Provincial Offices and yung atin pong mga um, officers on the ground from our field offices po. So, tingnan nga po natin sino na po ang ating mga kasamahan. You may uh, chat din po sa ating chat box. So, first po from Calapan City. May mga kasamahan na po ba tayo from Oriental Mindoro or from Calapan City po? Ayan, just use the clap, ayan, clap emoji po. Ayan, good morning po. All right. Hi po, ayun, Mikey, suwi na lang rin po kami to uh, let them know po that we're already starting. Thank you very much po. Uh, next naman po from province of Palawan. Ayan, ano po, na meron po tayong early bird award <laughs> na ay pagkakaloob po. Surprise po, no, kung kanino yan mapupunta. Pero uh, spoiler alert, galing po ito sa province of Palawan. So thank you very much po. Ayan, thumbs up naman po tayo para po sa mga province of Palawan. Tingnan po natin, sila po yata yung marami-rami na po no, ang naka-onboard po dito. Thank you very much po. 
And lastly po, but not the least, ay ang ating pong mga taga uh, Rojas Palawan. So, tingnan po natin sino na po, pa-heart react naman po para po sa ating mga taga Rojas Palawan. O yan, meron na rin po tayong uh, mga representatives po from Rojas Palawan. I believe po na nag-set uh, up lang daw po sila ng kanilang um, group viewing dahil po magkakasama po silang dadalo. Pero uh, sila naman po ay makakasama natin uh, in a while. So, All right. Thank you very much po. And uh, hopefully po no, ay mas marami po tayong mga kasamahan na as we officially start with our lectures pamaya-maya po. So maraming salamat po for um, saying po or expressing our presence at this moment. So all right po. Next part naman po ng ating activity ay of course before we Um, delve in po no, doon sa ating mga um, gustong matutunan ay uh, gusto po natin magkaroon naman ng um, context and uh, isa pong maikling mensahe para naman po i-welcome and uh, mag-show po ng appreciation para po sa lahat ng ating mga kasamahan ngayong araw. And uh, para po gawin yan, ay walang iba, nandito po kasama natin ngayon ay si Ma Maria Teresita G. Iglesia, ang Division Chief po ng uh, Local Government Capability Development Division uh, para nga po magbigay ng uh, short message po to uh, brighten up our day. Good morning, Ma'am Tess. Thank you, Chelsea. So, good morning po sa ating lahat. Uh, we really know that uh, everyone is busy, pero we have to take the opportunity po before the um, year ends to uh, give you this uh, rollout training on the guidelines of the JMC. Number 2021-67. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, greet uh, our local chief executives who sent uh, the participants today, uh, Governor Jose Alvarez of uh, Palawan. Salamat po at nandito ang ating mga participants. Also, the same to Honorable uh, Dennis Cabando of uh, Rojas, Palawan. And... Uh, Honorable City Mayor Arnold Panaligan of Calapan City. So I know na yung iba po ay nagsiset up pa lang. So hopefully po ay uh, makapasok sila within this day so that uh, they would be able to understand the guidelines of the Senate JMC. Uh, ang ating pong uh, mahal na regional director ay kasalukuyan pong uh, umaaten po dun sa ating uh, meron po kasi kaming audit ngayon ng ISO, QMS, kung kaya po... Uh, Kakatawanin ko po muna siya ngayon sa pagbibigay at pag-welcome sa inyo at pagbibigay ng kanyang mensahe. So, very timely po ang ating uh, topic ngayon. Do, hindi na po ito bago sa inyo, itong LED na tinatawag mo pin, katang WDP, uh, sapagkat uh, matagal na po natin pinopromote ito. Ito po yung isang programa na hindi masyado napapansin pero ito po ay lubos na napakahalaga sa ating mga local government units. So ngayon po ay uh, medyo hahapiyawan po natin. Ang uh, nakalista po dito ay labing anim na topics. At uh, nandito naman po ang ating mga kasama mula po, mula po sa Bureau of Local Government uh, and Development ng DILG para tulungan po tayo na ipaunawa sa ating mga uh, Uh, tatlong pilot sa uh, LGUs. Mala, uh, ma, ano po kayo? Uh, you are fortunate na kayo po yung tatlong uh, unang mga LGUs na aming uh, bibigyan ng uh, assistance dito po sa inutawag natin LED. Uh, yun nga po. Uh, Pag-usapan po natin ngayon yung uh, bakit nga ba importante itong LED Bigyan po tayo ng uh, masusi at na uh, komprehensibo uh, na uh, pag-unawa kung ano ba talaga yung LED at kung ano po ba itong mga bagong programa na sinasabi natin sa JMC na bago ito pong tinatawag natin si Bon. At kung papaano po natin magagawa itong tinatawag na Workforce Development Plan, paano natin mapapakilos ito pong ating LEDPO, itong ating LEDP, na matagal na po nating uh, kriniit at uh, malamang po ay uh, nagpukulang sa kung ano man yung function na dapat nilang ginagawa. So sa loob po ng araw na ito, ay unawain po muna natin yung guidelines bago po tayo pumunta doon sa mga pag-implement nitong JMC na ito. 
So, andito po ang ating, uh, sana nandito ang ating mga SB members concerned. Kasi sila yung sa policy aside from the local chief executive, ang ating mga local administrator, and then uh, yung usual po natin ng mga suki, si treasurer, ng peso, yung uh, tourism officer, agricultural officer, na di po at uh, sana meron din pong mga private sector para maunawaan po natin at makapagplano tayo para po dito sa LED at saka sa workforce development plan. So, uh, uh, yun nga po, uh, napaka-importante ba? Kung lalo na po ngayon, na sa panahon na tayo ay will uh, transition to full devolution. At alam naman po natin, bagamat sinasabi na ang full devolution ay magbibigay tayo ng increase in a fund for us, ay ito po ay sa unang taon lang at sa susunod na taon ay alam naman po natin na magkakaroon ng pagbaba sa tatanggapin natin na NPA. At uh, isa po sa ating uh, paraan ang mapalakas, ito po tinatawag natin na LED. Kaya importante po talaga ito. At hindi lang po siguro dahil uh, may full devolution, kundi ano na rin nasa pandemya tayo. At dahil dyan po, ay kinakailangan po na talaga nating makon ang ating mga uh, capabilities, ang potential ng ating LGUs upang hindi po tayo uh, lubos na umasa dun sa NPA. Bagamat ay makapag-source out po tayo, ng sarili nating uh, pagkukunan ng uh, ating mga uh, pagastusan para makapagsindi ng maayos sa ating mga constituents. So without further ado, I would like to read the gist of the message of the regional director. So ito lang, dalawang paragraph lang po yung binigyan niya ng diin. And he said that um, the pandemic is not only a health crisis but also an economic crisis. With this, the local economic development will steer the public, business, and non-governmental sectors to address economic problems and create better conditions for investment leading to economic growth and development. So further, the implementation of the CIBOL or the Strengthening Initiatives for Balanced Growth and Opportunities program aims to address the urgent need to create and restore employment to recover the economy and attain inclusive and sustainable peace. So with all this, let us join hands in harnessing our capabilities so does this program, CIBOL, could help us fully assume the functions, the services, and facilities required for us to uh, accept under the full devolution setup. And also, uh, through devolution, that uh, may it truly help us uh, provide excellent service to our constituents. Isang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at um, be safe pa tayong lahat. Alright, thank you very much po Ma'am Tess. Bigyan naman po natin ang uh, amin pong uh, si Ma'am Tess na isang virtual plot po for uh, giving value and context po no, doon sa ating um, activity for the next three days. So thank you very much po Ma'am Tess. And uh, now naman po, I believe po no, medyo complete na po yung ating target participants. We request ng po everyone to open their cameras for a very, very quick photo opportunity. So para meron po tayong before and after version ng ating uh, ng ating tin pong um, activity so no worries po no mag class picture pa rin naman po tayo after para po sa mga hahabol po nating mga participants so tayo po ay uh, one page pa lang po so far ayan uh, po all right let's give um, the next 10 seconds po ayan all right so naka open cam na po tayo smile lang po okay one two three all right thank you very much po so, maraming maraming salamat po. Hopefully po ay mas marami na po yung ating mga kasamahan uh, as we 
uh, progress po along uh, this morning. And um, to continue naman po, no, dahil po malawak na po yung nabigay na background ni Ma'am Tess, ay uh, dediretsuhin na po natin uh, to give an overview of our activity po para po alam natin ano yung ating mga expected uh, learnings no, for the next three days. Okay, so as mentioned po ni Ma'am Tess, no, yung objective po ng ating 3D activity is to capacitate po our target LGUs, which are Calapan City, yung province of Palawan, and Rojas, Palawan, in terms of uh, operationalizing or implementing yung ating pong guidelines on promoting local economic development and investment uh, promotion and establishment of the LEDIP office or unit and the guidelines on strengthening initiatives for balanced growth and opportunities o yung atin pong uh, CBOL. So we have here the specific uh, objectives po na gusto po sana natin makamit in the next three days. So una po dyan, I of course orient our target LGUs on the provisions of uh, the guidelines of the said uh, two programs and of course for you po to gain knowledge and understanding of uh, local economic development and the value and um, importance of establishing a lead uh, unit or office and the development, of course, of our workforce development program or plan. And uh, third po is to capacitate our target LGUs on the process in formulating yung ating nga pong WDP and to capacitate everyone on the process in formulating and or updating yung ating pong local investments and incentives code o yung ating pong DA. So um, as we go along po our uh, 15 sessions, ayun po, no, medyo uh, talagang marami po tayong learnings ay mas maintindihan naman po natin no, yung atin pong mga um, kailangan gawin after this training. So for our overview, um, right now po nasa day one tayo, this is a snapshot of our AM session so uh, or of our day one uh, session. So first po ay session one, understanding the business point of view. So ito po ay more of background po no, para sa ating lahat and we'll delve into session two, national investment laws. Um, session 3, Attracting Investments to the Area and the Role of the Local Government on Investments Promotion. And then po ang ating Session 4 will be the presentation of the DALG MC um, on lay po to lady po or yung pag-establish uh, po ng uh, opisina po nga na ito. Ang ating pong fifth session would be Understanding the Local Investments and Incentives Code. Next slide please. And uh, yun po yung ating mga expect for today. And then for day 2 naman po, we'll continue uh, na po no, dahil isa nga pong goal natin ay even past this uh, CAPDEV activity ay talaga pong magawa natin yung ating um, LIIC uh, po. So session 6 po ay yung ating local investments and incentives code template, yung discussion po yan. And uh, ano nga po ba yung kailangan natin gawin for each specific part. And then session 7 po is to support that a quick uh, review po no, or re reorientation on fiscal incentives. And then we'll delve na po or gagawin na po natin yung ating first workshop dedicated for the formulation of the LIIC work plan and of course we'll have a presentation of outputs. Kadugtong naman po ng day 2 sa ating afternoon session ay dadako naman na po tayo sa usapin po ng CBOL or yung formulation po ng ating workforce development plan. So to tie up po no, yung ating uh, local economic development yung ating workforce development, meron po tayong session 8 to uh, know po no, how we can integrate it sa ating pong mga local development plans. Session 9 naman po is a discussion on the National Employment Recovery Strategy or NERS point employment or recovery action plan and session 10 uh, will be the discussion on the salient features of the DALG DOLE test that DTI GMC on uh, CBOL nga po and then next po will end uh, I believe po will end day 2 with that Ah, ayun po pala, meron po po lang last bit sa ating day 2. Uh, meron po tayong mga kasamahan from our partner agencies. So magkakasunod po sila to discuss their role and responsibilities and the JMC and yung specific programs po. I believe po no, na localized na po ito uh, specific to our region. Yung kanila pong mga program offerings uh, in, rela uh, with, in relation to CBOL. So una po dyan yung ating pong uh, DOLI MIMAROPA followed by TESDA MIMAROPA and then by DTI MIMAROPA. And then to wrap up our um, second day po, no, we'll have a discussion on harmonizing national and local initiatives on workforce development. And then for our day three po, um, 
first po, we'll have the discussion on the template of the Workforce Development Plan. So, kagaya po nung sali, it now will be, uh, isa-isahin po natin yung mga kailangan po nating um, gawin para po ma-develop or ma-formulate yung ating WDP. And then, para naman po ma-ensure yung ating commitment and malaman po natin yung ating ways forward, yung ating mong second workshop, which is also our last workshop, will focus on uh, action planning naman po for the formulation of our WDP or the updating uh, for the case po of Rojas, no? Dahil uh, meron na po silang uh, existing or workforce development plan before. And then we'll just be discussing our ways forward and some commitment setting po, no? And then we'll proceed to our closing program. So those are uh, our activities po for the next three days. So again, 15 sessions and then two workshops po, two action planning workshops. All right, so Pat, Thumbs up naman po if we're excited and uh, clear po yung ating next 15 sessions. And again po, no, uh, makikisuyo po kami sa ating pong mga um, kasamahan po na uh, mapasabi po doon sa ating mga target LGUs to uh, already be on board. Pero ayun po, I think we're almost complete po. Can I see po from province of Palawan? Sino po yung mga kasamahan natin dito from province of Palawan po ulit? Ayan, hello, good morning po. Ayan, thank you very much po, Ma'am Maribel. Uh, from LGU Rojas, uh, Palawan po, I believe naka-onboard naka na po sila and naka-group viewing. Tama po ba? Ayan, good, good morning po sa Rojas, Palawan. You may use uh, any reaction po to signify po na tayo ay onboard na. Ayan, yes po daw. Thank you very much po. And uh, sa atin naman po mga taga Calapan City or Oriental Mindoro. Ayan, good morning po, Ma'am Lorna. All right. May kasama na po ba tayong mga taga Calapan? Or any updates? Po? Ah, susunod daw po. All right po. Ayan. Uh, lahat naman po nga ng ating discussion ay uh, recorded po. No? We'll be providing a recorded session sa atin as well as yung ating pong presentation materials. All right po. So now that uh, we see that ano po, no? almost everyone and uh, na-secure na po natin uh, na makakarating yung, po, no? yung ating mga um, nais na kasama, ay uh, magsisimula na po tayo sa ating pong uh, first session. And ito nga po yung understanding the business point of view, which which will set context sa lahat po ng ating mga pagtadaanan in the next three days. And to deliver this discussion, ay may mga kasamahan po tayo from the DILG Bureau of Local Government Development or the DILG BLGD that always helps and supports us po. Maraming maraming salamat. Alam po namin na uh, busy rin po tayo with ISO season this week po. Pero ayun po, uh, turning over the floor po sa ating po mga kasamahan from DILG BLGD for our first session. Good morning po. Um, kita na po yung screen? Yes po, Ami Azumi. Okay. How um, wait lang po. Wait lang po, ma'am. No worries po, ma'am. While waiting po, we request lang po ulit natin yung ating pong participants to accomplish nga po yung ating um, attendance form. Can we see uh, chat po sa ating chat box if nakapag-accomplish na po ba tayo para we can double check with our records? Since yung mga na-receive po natin sa ating Google Forms, yung ating lang pong... Um, mai-detali uh, po or maisasama dun nga po sa aming list na pagbibigyan ng ating Certificate of Participation. And hopefully po everyone was able to answer na po yung ating pre-test. Thank you very much po. Uh, the same goes po dun po sa uh, Rojas Palawan po. If kahit po naka-group viewing tayo, may we request uh, individually po no, to accomplish our attendance link uh, per participant. Uh, salamat po.
Okay, um, good morning po everyone. Apologies po for the delays. Um, okay, um, good morning. Um, my name is Yazumi Sia from the Department of uh, from the DILD Bureau of Local Government Development. Um, today, um, I'm, I'm going to discuss understanding the business point of view. Next slide. So under that topic, we have two um we have two subtopics to cover. First one, the decision making process of investors. So under that, meron din tayong types of investments, portfolio investment, and direct investments. Um, we will also tackle the direct investment process from the point of view of investors. And the next one would be the expectations of investors. So it is important for us po to understand the point of view of the business para mas madali para sa atin na maintindihan kung ano ba ang pwede nating ma-offer para sa mga investors. Next po. For the types of investments, first we have portfolio investment. So um, portfolio investment is investments in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and etc. So um, it's important for us to know kung ano ba ang mga investment na pagtutuunan ng isang business. So, um, as what I have mentioned earlier, portfolio investment is ownership of stocks, bonds, or other financial assets with expectation that it will earn a return or grow value over time or both. So, this type of investment po entails passive or hands-off ownership of assets. So, as opposed naman sa portfolio investment, we have direct investments. So, um, direct investment or investment in plants, machineries, equipment, and real estate, and etc. So, this type of investment implies hands-on management. So, next book. So, in today's discussion, we are going to focus on direct investments. Why? Um, because this triggers technology spillovers. Um, it assists human capital formation, it contributes to international trade integration, and it helps create a more competitive business environment and enhances enterprise development. So when business focus on direct investments, we may take note of the following. So um, this could be the single largest decision they make in any given year. It also entails huge capital outlays, and they need to keep the investment costs low and the company's future is at stake. So companies do this to ensure business continuity. Next talk. Um, foreign direct investment. So when we talk about direct investment, hindi po mawawala ang foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investment is direct investment overseas by a company retaining 10% or more equity interest in the investment. So, to know more about FBI, um, next talk. Um, let us watch the short video. Hello po, Ma'am Yazumi. 
Um, okay lang po ba kayo may mga pa-share sound po? Uh, okay po. Thank you very much po. Okay na po ma'am. Okay, um, oh, based on the video, po, it was explained that there are various types of FBI. So now let's focus naman on the reasons why businesses opt for new direct investment. First, um, to enter new markets. Uh, by entering new markets, so this allows businesses to broaden their reach and increase its potential to sell, this, uh, to sell their products and services to more customers. Next naman po, uh, for new capacity. So this, not, this may entail new sources of raw materials for the business. Aside from that, um, to consolidate operations, so business initiate this to improve operational efficiency by reducing redundant personnel and processes. So aside from consolidating operations, so businesses want to improve operating conditions. Um, they would also want to introduce new technology. So, for example, po, there's a company that produces drone fertilizer. So, ang gagawin po nila, no, maghahanap sila ng isang um, area kung saan hindi pa nagagamit yung drone fertilizer. So, in that way, um, pwede po silang makahanap ng market po. Next po is to produce new product lines. So, good example po nito, no, um, what happened last uh, to businesses last year. So, Maraming mga businesses na nag-shift or nag-add ng product lines nila producing face masks dahil alam nga po nila na sobrang laki ng naging demand ng face masks dahil sa pandemic. Next is to lower operating costs. So businesses look for country or regions that may offer lower operating costs to minimize, to minimize their operating costs. And next is to supply globalizing clients. Next po. Um, another important um, thing to know is who to tap or who to talk to dahil um, hindi naman po po pwede na diretso agad tayo sa president when we um, talk to those businesses. So, um, eh, of course po, meron po tayong sinusunod na processes. So, these are the officers and positions to approach. So, important, important din po na magkaroon tayo ng um, research. Alam din natin ang background information ng businesses na gusto natin na um, itap. Next po. So, um, in decision making of invest investor, they have a demand. So, common demand is the typical location that they need kung saan sila magtataya ng factory or offices. So, usually, um, pag ginakausap na tayo ng mga investors, they already have in mind 
So they have the criteria or the criteria, perception, experiences about the Philippines or kung saan po sila magtatayo. Um, they already talked with a lot of consultants or brokers just to make sure na they are, they are able to get the information that they want. Next, then um, they try naman po to have the elimination process. So dito na po pumapasok ang benchmarking. So titignan po nila kung saan kaya ang um, maraming workforce para sa itatayo nilang factory or offices. So titignan din nila kung nasaan ang concentration, kung tama ba ang um, napili, ang naiisip nilang lugar. So um, yun, businesses have to study and eliminate their options. So after elimination, um, um, there will be the short list with three options that they will check already among the criteria. So um, they're able to get answers from them and after that, they would get in touch to confirm naman with companies or with the locality that they intend to visit. So um, location and... So yeah, next for uh, location visit and discussion and data confirmation. So in terms of site visits po, um, businesses already had in mind. Kailangan na lang po na lang i-confirm kung tama ang magiging decision nila. Also, um, ang mga investors po nang hihingi din po yan ng mga rental fee arrangement and wage subsidies na medyo um, sa ngayon po hirap pa ang national and local government kasi um, uh, as compared po sa Vietnam and Myanmar, no, they are being offered such. Next was the implementation. Importante din po ang um, specialist advice. Ito yung usually sa bawat isang league on a national level, there's usually a person in charge when investors return. Uh, hindi na po kailang, uh, hindi na po maraming tao ang kailangan nilang i-approach. So yung person in charge po na yun will also process and help us facilitate the registration and approvals ng business. Next po. Next slide po. So um, with regards to due diligence in typical location uh, arrange, um, arrangement, it is important na meron tayo or alam natin ang fieldwork na ginagawa ng investor. So they usually inspect real estate. Um, ngayong pandemic po, no, they do this online. So make sure lang po natin na our location is available online. So there would also be evaluation of labor availability quality and cost. Uh, usually po nakikita na nila yan, but when they get to the area, they're quite disappointed because they will be passed on pasa peso and then peso will try to assure them. Um, but when they start the commercial operations, but, um, minsan po hindi po nabibigay yung mga numbers na kailangan nila. Next po, um, they investigate zoning, permitting, and regulation. So important din po ito Tapos, um, they also review uh, living conditions kasi po yung mga, um, for example, po, yung mga expats po nila, they also have dependents. So, they also need to um, enjoy life there uh, where they will be located. So, dapat po may commercial center or okay po yung schools and there will be comfortable houses in the area. They also um, evaluate area, utility, and highway infrastructure. Um, they also conduct local interviews with the public and private sectors. Next, they also um, review the access to suppliers and businesses, so um, business services. So they also determine the local tax expenditures. Next quote. So aside from the typical location, there would also be a demand on information requirements. So the information that are required from the long list down to implementation um, is considered very vital. So, yun po, yung market, just like what I've mentioned earlier, kung meron po ba silang pagbibentahan sa mga napili nila, na, na pupo sa anilang lugar. Um, meron din, um, also po, um, kung meron po bang labor issues, so importante po na ang LG, uh, LG Union yung makapagbibigay ng figures regarding labor issues like unions, strike, lockouts, mga ganun issues po. Kasi karanihan po ng investors, no, they take it into consideration as part of their decision to invest. 
Next, operating infrastructure. Um, kasi po, marami pong nakalagay online na pending in the pipeline infrastructure. So, gusto po nila dito na makita ka agad na yung factory po ba nila ay mapupuntahan po. Next po, they also um, check the property if it's uh, ready in terms of all um, including the utilities. For um, supplier access, of course, they want to be near ports and highways po para po mas mapapadali para sa businesses nila. No? So another thing is taxation and incentives. Also, the environment and quality of life and the location compliance. So again, all these po are important na mapackage natin ito and be available via the uh, LG website. So to sum it up po, um, it all boils down to availability, quality, cost, and time. So pwede po sa website ninyo um, gumawa ng digital flyers or do an email blast. But, um, but this information must be ready anytime po no, when you have to meet the investors. Next slide po. So ano po ba yung mga specific information na hinahanap ng investors? So under labor po, the productivity, availability, kung ano po ba ang skill level ng mga tao, uh, turnover rate po ba doon, mababa, hindi po ba sila basta-basta umaalis. Kapag, um, um, next po, uh, pag sinabi niyo po ba na ang priority investment area ninyo ay BPO, um, siguraduhin po natin na yung mga university sa lugar malapit doon would produce um, expected number of graduates that will be valuable to the kind of skill level for the BPO or IT-related companies or kung ano man po yung mga kapasok na business. For um, manufacturing companies po that are prevalent in your area, ang kailangan natin ay mas maraming engineers. So, next po, so logistics. Um, importante din po, lagi din pong tinatanong ng mga investors natin, no, yung port access, air access, rail and truck access. So, tinitignan nila kung gaano kalayo ang in-offer ninyo na lugar sa mga nabanggit po kanila. The quality of life, they also check that. So, ito po yung housing, schools, recreation, safety, and environment. So, kung yung iba po, especially big companies, no, they would appreciate then yung mga reports nyo that there's no crime in your area. And of course, there would be um, schools, commercial, urban areas in the locality and other recreational facilities. So po, uh, next, for the utilities, um, tinitignan po din po nila kung may access to sa internet, kung meron po ba mga telecommunication lines or anything that would connect them to their network. For the real estate, um, they also check the availability, condition, market, tre uh, market trends, terms of terms and depreciation. So you have to make all these information available for them. Next for the market, the political, social, legal, financial, regulatory, geographical, and risk. So ito po, pwede po natin itong i-prepare beforehand dahil usually naman po no, the data are available online and you could just package it for the investors. For the services, the raw materials, customs, Accounting, legal, financial, and distributors. So last po for the demographic. So kung may union po ba? Um, if there is other industry present, population trends, employment by sectors, and etc. Pag may present po tayo sa investors, no? hindi lang po yung lupa or mga parang generic na information. Kailangan din po maging specific tayo. And alam po natin, kung ano ang mga, um, so alam po natin ibigay kung ano mga pangangailangan ng mga investors. Next po. So let's talk about supply naman. So ano po ba ang good practice ng LGU or investment promotion unit para sa kanilang response? So we have to check po um, ano po ba ang common drivers or requirements ng mga investors na ito. Uh, katulad po ng nabanggit natin kanina, no? Usually, when they get in touch with LGUs, they already know what they want. So, um, they will just tell you kung ano yung mga kailangan nila. So, from those specific information requirements um, that we have from the typical location requirements, um, 
kung available po ito, no, mas mapapadali po when you discuss this with the investors. Um, and it will also be easy for you to be able to come up with responses during times na makikipag-usap kayo sa kanila. So, karamihan po, um, nang nagiging voice natin, no, yung mga website na meron po tayo. So, ito rin po yung magiging image visibility brand po natin. So, in-encourage po na everyone uh, sa website po, no, um, all the information must be available. Uh, next po. So, ayan po. In summary, what investors expect from us? So, investors expect us to be reliable, accurate, and timely information and advice. So, dapat po, um, we also we have to make sure na tama yung sinasabi natin sa kanila. And hindi rin po maganda sa credibility natin yung kabago-bago at indecisive. Next po, we have to be quick and efficient. Uh, efficient to responses sa mga queries. So, kailangan po natin maging attentive no? when investors have queries or clarifications. Dapat po, uh, le ready tayo na sumagot sa kanila sa mga questions na um, pinatanong po nila. Next po, confidentiality and consistency. So, we have to treat every detail or information na binibigay natin sa investors with confidentiality. Next, the um, single point of contract. So, hindi rin po maganda na papalit-palit tayo ng tao na kailangan sa usapin ng mga businesses. So, makaka, um, meron dapat po tayong isang tao na contact ng businesses na yun from start until makapag-decide um, po sila to have their businesses in your locality. At of course, hindi rin po nakakatulong yun sa navigation through bureaucracy kung madami po yung sinakausap ang businesses. Number six po, each promoter is an ambassador of the area being promoted. So, importante po na you would personify your area. So, alam po natin dapat kung ano ang mga detalye sa mga lugar ninyo. Seven, um, straightforward and honest attitude. So, pag um, we have to be honest po no, sa investors kung ano po talaga yung pwede natin ma-offer sa kanya kung meron po bang mga um, request si investor or si sila investors na hindi natin kaya ibigay. Um, yun po, we have to be honest with them. We have to tell them agad. Next po. Ways to promote and manage investors' expectations in the new normal. So, now that we are in the pandemic, ano po ang gagawin natin? So, pwede po tayo mag-populate sa website natin. Dapat at the back of our mind, no, we have to think na the information should be at the investors' fingertips. So, dapat naka-include sa website kung ano yung mga possible nilang itanong at hindi yung parang nanghuhula sa investor kung ano po ba, um, kung saan nila makukuha yung mga data na kailangan nila. So, yun po, um, reminder lang po sa atin no, na uh, we have to package the information, yung mga possible questions na kailangan na maitatanong ng investors. So, we have to be ready. At kung sana po, um, kung pwede, available po siya online para po mas madali para sa investors natin na makita yung mga hinahanap nila. Next po. Um, yun po, um, that is all with my presentation. Thank you po. Alright, thank you very much po, Ma'am Yuzumi. So, ayan, at this point po, we see po na no, na-complete na po yung ating um, target participants from the respective LGU. So, uh, yun po, napakagandang way to begin our um, three-day activity po na no, understanding really ano nga po ba yung uh, drivers po no, ng ating uh, mga investors and ano nga po ba yung mga areas na kailangan po natin uh, bigyan ng pansin. So, with that po, meron po ba tayong uh, mga questions para po kay Ma'am Yozumi uh, specifically for this session? So, we may raise our hand po or chat them sa ating pong Zoom chat box uh, for us to address it po.
All right, sige po. Meron po bang questions or concerns po that at this point po meron na po tayong um, naisip or uh, we're good po muna, no? pinaprocess po po muna natin yung ating po natutunan. Pahingi naman po ng thumbs up if so far po ay tayo po ay good po with the discussions. Right, let us see. Okay, so I think po, no? Uh, so far, okay. Sige po, meron lang po, ayun, meron pong pumasok, uh, Ma'am Yuzumi, meron lang po pumasok na uh, one question po from anonymous participant. Um, regarding lang po ito doon sa mga nabanggit po natin kanina ng types of investments, so may question lang po dito, can the LGU participate in stocks or bonds mm -hmm. investment? Uh, ano? Uh... Uh, yes po, Hello. good morning po Ma'am Lulu. Oo, oo, oo. Ah, kasi di ba, pwede kasi nasa local government ko naman siya uh, being a corporate power po. Pwede naman po. So, uh, as we go along, madidiscuss naman po yun. Uh, para mapipoint natin kung anong section po sa local government ko na pwede po sila. All right, So, medyo excited po no, yung ating pong nakapagtanong. Madidiscuss pa po natin siya later on sa ating pong mga sessions. So, any other questions po from the rest po of our participants? Or uh, do we want to proceed po muna to the next session and then just ano po, no, continue with our open forum after? Are we okay po with that uh, plan? Patingin nga po. Uh, pa thumbs up naman po if uh, we're good po to proceed to our second session. Okay. TY very much po. I believe that uh, signals us to... Uh, ano po, no? proceed to our second session. Again po, this will be presented by the DALG Bureau of Local Government Development. And this one naman po, mas mabigyan na po tayo ng context so doon po sa legal basis ng no, ating po mga dinadiscuss. So these are these are our um, discussions po on the national investment laws. So specifically, um, salient features of investment laws such as CREATE and other uh, laws po no, na ating pong um, share later and also our strategic investment priorities plan. So again po, uh, calling our dear uh, colleagues po from the DALGBLGD to uh, present po our second session. Maraming salamat po and the floor is yours po. So, hello po. Good morning po. Nakikita na po ba yung screen ko? Yes po, sir. Uh, clear po ang ating audio at kita na po yung sa screen. Salamat po. Uh, so, good morning po everyone. I'm here to share with you po the National Laws on Investment po. So, the, so first po is, this loss po is designed to attract investments to projects needed by our economy by giving incentives. This loss po is important because it gives us a basis then po for giving incentives. So, maka-attract tayo ng maraming investors sa pag invest sa ating country. National law also serves as a guide in crafting the local ordinance in investment because we aim po for consistency, consistency in policies po, definition and eligibility rules. And lastly po, it affords smooth investment facilitation po at our local level. So for us, as already po po, we need to understand po the national laws for us to understand and to answer po if may mga queries, for example, yung ating mga investors na papasok po sa ating country. So for our first law po is the Omnibus Investment Code of the Philippines or the Executive Order 226 po. This is the oldest law and used to have five books po, but most of the books po were amended. However, this law is still effective po because it established the Board of Investment po, which is the agency that leads in the investment promotion efforts of the Philippines. This law also provides the Special Investors Residence Visa po. This visa is to those foreigners who will do business and will stay here in the country. And, and this visa po is given 
when there is a minimum inward remittance of 75,000 US dollars po. So next is the Foreign Investment Act of 1991. Uh, this act po came from the EO 2216 po and is amended and became an independent law po. This law is about foreign ownership. So kahit po 10% lang ng Kay 10% lang po ang foreign ownership ng isang company, it is considered as it is considered under Foreign Investment Act po. So one of one of the ano rin po is the foreign investment negative list. This list down the types of business where foreign ownership is not allowed or limited. So bakit po may not allowed or limited? Kasi we need we also need po to protect our micro small medium enterprises which is mostly po of the philippine economy is ano, ano po siya ng msmes and we have to protect them that's why there are certain businesses na di pwede si foreigner like for example po uh, a sari sari store po is a form of msmes and foreigners are not allowed po to own a sari sari store po kasi we would like also to protect din po yung economy ng Philippines. So lastly po, under the Foreigner Investment Act of 1991, the land ownership limitation of natural born former Filipinos. For uh, for this po, for example, if a natural born Filipino po migrated to another country and earned po a citizenship sa country na yon, and they decided to come back here sa Philippines and nag-decide din po na bumili ng land, they are allowed to buy a land but with limited hectares lang po. Hindi po sila pinapayagan na wala pong limited hectares. So next slide is the Special Economic Zone Act of 1995 or the RA7916. And I think po, some of us have what we call the PESA Zone, po, the Philippine Economic Zone Act. So the Philippine Economic Zone Act has created the Philippine Economic Zone Authority or PESA. And also under this law, there is also the registration of private economic zone. So up from Luzon, I think marami po tayong PESA. Kaya makatulong po sa atin to for investment. So next is the special laws. So these next uh, these laws are different types of law that created different public economic zone. For example, bo, this investment location, these zones po is the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority po or CESA. Next is the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan. Next is the Aurora Pacific Economic Zone and Freeport Authority. Next is the Basis Conversion and Development Authority po. Next is the FIVIDEC Industrial Authority. And lastly is the Sambuanga City Special Economic Zone Authority po. So next is the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentive for Enterprises or the CREATE law po. Uh, this law po is bago lang and was and effective po siya last April 11, 2021. This law po has amended many laws in investment and taxation din po. Uh, EO 226, PESA law were amended by the CREATE law po. And the par parts of those laws po that was amended is nasa incentive portions po. The National Internal Revenue Code was also amended by the CREATE law. So bakit po nag-aamend ng law si CREATE law? nag po siya ng law to reduce taxes po on business such as the corporate income tax and percentage task, tax. Corporate income tax natin used to be 30% po before the effectivity of this CREATE law. And now po na effective na siya, bumaba po yung ating corporate income tax to 25% po. And kapag naman po small and medium enterprises, the ang or ang 
in, ang corporate income tax lang po natin is 20, 20%. Just also po under the create law, meron po tayong new ad, new value added tax exemptions po na dinagdag na galing from the create law. So the create law po has also uh, also help the country to be competitive sa ating ASEAN region because before the effectivity of this law po, we are one of the highest corporate income tax po. Kaya yung mga investors na gustong pumunta or mag-invest dito sa atin is medyo nagdadalawang isip po kasi nga po, sobrang taas po ng ating corporate income tax. Pero nung nag effective na po itong law, medyo naging, naging competitive na rin po tayo kasi ang um, estimated po na corporate income tax ng ating mga ASEAN neighbors is 22%. So yung atin po by from 30% naging 25% na po siya. So malaking tulong po ang nagnegawa nitong create law sa pagiging competitive ng ating bansa. Tapos the create law also created one incentive package for investors in the Philippines. Also in the create law, more incentives given to projects outside of Metro Manila and adjacent areas so that there will also more development in other areas of the countries. Siyempre po, uh, hindi naman po pwede na sa Metro Manila lang po nagbuboom yung ating mga investors. So nakatulong rin po ito sa pagpapataas din ng ating economy, sa pagtatanggap din ng, at, ng mga investors sa other areas po ng ating country. So lastly, the projects to be eligible for incentive must be listed in the strategic investment priorities plans po. Uh, the projects po that was listed in the SIPP are the projects po na under na will undergo rigorous review and consultation po with different government agencies and private sectors. So next slide, ito po yung menu of fiscal incentives na ginawang available po ng ating create law. So first po is the income tax holiday. Uh, ito po yung tax na once the company is registered, they will not pay the income tax po for four to seven years from the beginning of their operations po. So after that, the registered enterprises can either have the special corporate income tax or the enhanced deduction. And also the duty exemption of import, importation and the value added tax exemption. Po. For the enhanced deduction, po, for example, dito po sa kabila, uh, Sa deduction on training expense, kunwari po if, di ba 100% po yung additional deduction on research and development. Kapag po nagbayan na, nag-file na ng income tax, ay ng tax revenue ang isang company, kunwari po 1 million po ang nagasos nila, mag magbabayad po sila ng 2 million kasi po 100% po ang kanilang iaano. Yeah, So, ang what could be more important to understand that the LGU? So, LGU must be must understand the special corporate income tax po, kasi nakalagay po dito in lieu of all national and local taxes, with a maximum of 10 years po. So, before the create law, the only one that can avail these incentives po is those areas in the peso zones lang. For those areas who have no PESA po, uh, ito po ay bago lang sa kanila. Kaya medyo maganda rin po na magkaroon po tayo ng create law para lahat po is para may consistency po sa ating pagbibigay ng incentives. So next is the local investment and incentive codes. So it complements the incentive given by the national laws. It, also, it is a document that highlights the local projects suitable in the area and incentive available to investors. So projects aligned po natin 
with the national investment priorities are the projects in the strate strategic investment priority plan or the transis transitory transitory IP people. So uh, also at Green Pupala, the transitory IPP, the Strategic Investment Priority Plan, is still being completed po. Kaya po ngayon, ang create law po natin is being implemented po using the 2020 Investment Priorities Plan po. So ano nga po ba ang ating Investment Priorities Plan? So the Investment Priorities Plan po, this is the project that is being prioritized and promoted po by our national government. Under the IPP 2020, we have three, cate three categories po. The preferred activities po, the export activities, and the special laws. For preferred activities po, we have the number one po, essential goods and services to fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Next po is investment in activities to support programs to generate work opportunities outside of congested urban areas. So dito po is yung ating mga balik probinsya program and also masasali po natin dito yung CBOL po. So next po is all qualified manufacturing activities including agro-processing. So as long as they use up-to-date up technology po, Next is commercial production of agriculture, fishery, and forestry products. So ito pag commercial po and business po, yung farming, like farming po. So next is strategic services. So these services po is about ICTs po, information, communication technologies po. Like for example, integrated circuit design, creative industries, knowledge-based services. Maintenance, repair, and overhaul um, of aircraft. And last po is the charging refueling station for alternative energy vehicles. Also po, from strategic services, we have industrial waste treatment, telecommunications, and yung state-of-the-art engineering procurement and constructions po natin. So number six po, from our preferred activities, we have healthcare and disaster risk reduction management services, mass housing, infrastructure and logistics, including LGU, public private partnerships, po, innovation drivers, inclusive business models, po, environment or climate change related projects, po, and lastly, po, yung, other, yung ating energy related. Po. So for export activities, naman po. We have the production and manufacture of export products, service exports po, and the activities in support of exporters po. Ito po yung ating mga logistics pagdating po sa ating import and exporting. So for our special po, sa ating last category po, this is the different laws that were promulgated over the years po and in which this loss is kailangan po ng incentives. So this loss po, we have incentives po sa mga ito. So first is industrial tree plantation. Next is mining. Pero limited lang po yung ating incentives sa capital equipment. So number three naman po is yung publication or printing of books or textbooks. Next is refining, storage, marketing, and distribution of petroleum products. Next is rehabilitation, self-development, and self-reliance of persons with disability. Next is renewable energy. Next is tourism. And lastly po, yung ating energy efficiency and con conservation po. So, and lastly po, we, we don't need to memorize the national laws po. We just need to understand them and know where to look lang po sa ating mga 
sagot or if may katanungan po si investors, alam po natin kung saan natin hanapin or saan tayo magbe-base sa ating isasagot sa ating investors. So, for our LGUs po, for us to review and formulate yung ating liik, we need to let the national laws po be our guide and help po to know the projects po and prior the projects that are prioritized po by the national government. So I think that's all po. Thank you po for listening. Uh, yes. Thank you very Yes po, Ma'am Can you add more? No, go ahead po. Okay. Go ahead po, Ma'am Louie. Oo. Regarding doon sa discussion po ng at ni Dong regarding sa mga different national laws po, uh, different laws na pumasok po dito sa Pilipinas, regarding po doon sa strategic, uh, strategic investment priority plan, ang BOF, ang BLGF po, ang Bureau of Local, um, sorry, Board of Investment po, under DTI po, sila yung nagka-crap and nagka-crap ng ating strategic investment priority plan for three years po. So, what does it mean po? Ito po yung minamarket ng ating BOI na pumupunta pa po sila sa isang sa ibang basa, nakikipag uh, nakikipag-negotiate sila sa mga company po na ito na para dalhin po dito sa Pilipinas po. So, ibig sabihin, uh, so, um, kung gagawa po ang LTU ng kanilang leak investment priority Uh, liik, a local investment incentive code at ilalikin nila investment na priority areas po kasi in your liik meron kayong identified na top 10 investment priority areas. So, mas maganda po sana kung maglalikay kayo nun, i-align po natin doon sa strategic investment priority plan. So, para kung ano yung minamarket dito po ng ating national, ng VOI, so, dapat uh, yun na din po ang inyo. Wala nung masama kung kumuha uh, Uh, mag-market din kayo ng sarili yung investor within your locality. Pero sana kung paari lang po, i-align natin doon sa na-mention po ng mga uh, nasa IPP po. So, regarding uh, kung may mga economic zone area po kayo sa inyong lugar, uh, may incentive po sa binibigay ang national government for that. So, kung gagawa po kayo ng liik at maglalagay po kayo mga fiscal incentives doon sa inyong local investment incentive code po, uh, i ano po natin, i-partner natin doon sa Create Law. Susunod na po natin. Kasi yung Create Law po, uh, it is 10 years in the making. Kung hindi pa po ata nagkaroon ng pandemic, hindi pa po ito uh, maaaprobahan. Kasi the Create Law, alam naman natin na pinaliit po yung mga taxes na binabayaran pa. Kasi alam naman natin yan sa salary natin, di ba? Pag wala ka doon sa certain limit of your salary, uh, pwede ka nang magkakaroon uh, ka ng tax exemption. So, wala ka nang mabayaran tax. So, yung ating mga tax, ating mga sweldo, binawasan na din po yan. So, it's all under create yun po. So, yun po, yung mga na-mention, yung foreign direct investment naman po na, na sinusunod din po natin kasi Uh, in, yung mga yung mga foreign investor na gusto mag uh, uh, magkaroon ng mga uh, investment po dito ng uh, businesses so uh, provided po dapat may Filipino partners sila kasi syempre hindi naman pwedeng mag-own sila ng 100% po sa kanilang business so yun po so uh, kung ano po binibigay ng national government na mga incentives like PPP kung meron PPP po kayo sa inyong lugar, pwede kayo magbigay ng incentives for PPP po kasi binibigay na rin po yun ng national government for that po. So, uh, dito po sa session na ito, pinapaalam lang po kung ano yung mga pwede niyong basihan sa pagbibigay po ng incentive. But you can consult your BLGF for fiscal incentive po kasi misan ang LGU kasi nagbibigay kayo ng, ng more than uh, income tax holidays. So, dapat po, uh, you can consult BLGF kung okay lang po ba nagbibigay ka ng more than one year na income tax holiday. So, yung mga incentive naman po na binibigay national government is only for new investment. So, hindi po yung taon-taon binibigay po. Yung, in just in case na may gusto-gusto kayong uh, business na pumasok sa lugar niyo po, so, ang incentive ang po natin, right, na pwede natin silang bigyan ng incentive kasi para lang makuha nyo yung business na yun, di po ba? So sabi nga, uh, during the uh, understand the point of view of the investor. So syempre, pag 
kung pag inikayat niyo yung pumasok po sa locality niyo, so you can give a incentive or pabuya na parang makuha niyo talaga. Ganun po naman ang negotiation, di ba? So, yun po. So, yun po. Kaya po pinipresent yung SIPP para sana yung investment priority area niyo po magaling na rin po dun sa SIPP po. Yan lang po. Thank you. Alright, thank you very much, Ma'am Louie, for that uh, additional information po to our participants. So, at this point po, no, na ilatag na nga po ito pong ating mga relevant investment laws, meron po ba tayong mga katanungan or clarifications po, uh, lalo na po dun sa additional information po na na-provide ni Ma'am Louie? And yung, yung ano nga po, no, pag-advocate na sana po ay ma-align nga po natin no, to this, ang atin pong local uh, investment plans. Mayroon po bang question from any of our participants na I believe po talagang kompletong-kompleto na. <laughs> Alright. You may yes, raise... idagdag ko lang pala. Ah, sige, go ahead uh, po. Uh, yung ginagawa po kasi yung strategic investment priority plan ng national government, uh, yung iba po yan, three years lang po siya. So, ang tanong kasi mo isa ng iba, uh, gano'n daw ba, expiration ba daw yung liik? <laughs> so, unlike sa local revenue po, may sa ataf, after five years at ang pag-update. Pero yung, yung liik po, uh, wala siya expiry kasi hanggang di na implement yung investment priority areas ng LGUs na na-identify nila sa liik. Pero yun nga po, pag, uh, kailangan nilang mag-update. Yun lang, updating lang po ang kailangan sa liik. Kasi pag, para pag nag-change po ng investment priority plan ng national government, Susunod po kayo doon. So, update lang po yun. So, you have to update for that uh, yung mga investment priority plan. Para yung investment priority area nyo, halimbawa, for example, wala kayong makuha market na identify kayo, pero wala kayong makuha market for that, for that uh, particular uh, industry. So, yun po. Ibig sabihin, walang dumarating dito sa, sa, Pilip, sa bansa natin, sa Pilipinas, kasi hindi po yun ang priority ng ating country. So, yun po. So, kaya sinasabi natin, update, align natin sa sa SIP po. Ayun po. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am Ma Louis, ano lang po, additional, ay follow-up question po to that. Uh, ano po yung frequency ng updating po natin ng SIP? Uh, uh, every three years ang ginagawa kasi ng Board of Investment eh. So, kinoconsult nila yan, hindi lang national government, pati academe, pati mga businesses na lahat ng business organization within the Philippines, kinukang po nila. Kasi minsan, yung may mga, like this pandemic, di ba, um, may mga bumagsak na company. So, kumbaga hindi siya yung reporterism, for example, mga ganyan. So, nagkakaroon ng mga businessman, mga nagbagong areas of investment kasi pag magpapatuloy sila do baka malugi po sila so yun po so uh, uh it depends yan like for application of new technology di ba kasi mga solar panel so yung mga ganyan so hindi kaya dito na pumunta yan kasi kumbaga parang for climate change so nagso solar panel na po tayo yun nga lang po uh yung mga waste disposal yung mga solar energy yan po yung pina priority ngayon kasi baga for climate change for process po. Copy po. Thank you po, Ma'am Louie. Uh, meron lang rin po ditong question po from ano, no? Habang pong nag, uh, nag uh, iisip po po yung ating ibang participants. Uh, given nga po na um, first year na po ng implementation and we're already preparing din po para po sa full devolution, ayan, uh, ano, ano daw po, Ma'am, yung sigurong um, impact nung atin pong um, investment priorities plan dun po sa uh, ayun nga po sa prioritization po natin ng PPAs given nga po yung uh, pending or paparating po na full devolution implementation meron po bang reprioritization na mangyayari po ma'am uh, indicated in the investment priorities plan wala naman po kasi it will depend on the LGU kasi pag nag-prepare po kayo ng liig you will identify your top 10 investment priority areas so, nasa po yun. Kung, kung baga, ang sinasabi lang namin, align lang yun yung investment priority areas nyo sa so, investment priority plan. Kasi ito po yung minamarket ng ating national government para pumunta po dito sa Pilipinas. So, uh, 
para kung halimbawa may dumating, for example, na market po ng, ito sa isang area, in the market ng ROI, so ang hanapin nila yan, i-refer nila sa local government units. Paano kung halimbawa walang local government units na interested, sayang din po, po yung mga ganong bagay. So, kasi kung halimbawa may nakalagay yan sa investment investment priority area nyo sa paggawa nyo ng liik po, so at least uh, I'm interested pa itong LGU na to, so you have to do everything po to, be, uh, to win the heart of that investor po. All right, thank you very much po, Ma'am Louie. Um, with those additional information pa po, no, uh, meron po bang, uh, yun nga po, mga questions na po yung ating mga participants or clarifications? Saka, Chels, ah, sila po, siguro. Okay, okay lang po, Ma'am, go lang po. Baka sabi nila, saan naman magagaling investment priority areas nila? Mm -hmm. So, the investment priority area will depend on your comprehensive development plan. Di ba? May mga projects kayo na-identify sa inyong CDP. Then, your CDP, uh, ano ba dito? Pag na-identify nyo yung mga projects na to, ano ba dito for uh, sa LGU ba to? O baka pwede na to sa private sector? So, yung mga ganun bagay po, o oh, baka PPP naman itong project na ito, pwedeng pang PPP. It's still a uh, uh, time pa rin ng investment priority plan po yun. So, yung mga ganun bagay. So, you can, uh, ang basis po talaga natin sa pag-identify talaga is your CDP po and your plan, use plan, your CLUP. Hindi po tayo lalayo doon. Salamat. Copy. Thank you, Ma'am Louie. And meron nga rin po tayong session dedicated on uh, knowing po no, how to integrate ito nga pong LED and uh, later on yung WDP discussion po natin sa atin pong existing local development plans. So, ayun po. Um, can, I, can we get a thumbs up na lang po if so far po ay good pa naman po tayo with the discussion and uh, with the additional info. No, marami pong mas napapalalim po ni Ma'am Louie yung understanding natin by her additional uh, info. So, pa thumbs up naman po if uh, so far po with uh, a good po tayo with the discussion. Can we see po? All right. So I, I think uh, we're still okay po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Louie and Sir Dom. And actually po, no, actually dapat po lunch break na po yung ating sunod. Pero since we have a uh, much amount of time, ay okay lang po ba sa ating pong uh, participants and sa ating pong colleagues from the DILGBLGD if we go on a 10-minute health break or 9-minute rather para po sakto 10.50 po tayo makabalik. So it's now 10.41 a.m. We can go back po at 10.50 a.m. And we will proceed po with our uh, session 3 discussion on attracting investments to the area and the role of the local government on investments promotion. So would that be okay po, Ma'am Louie kaya, if we uh, go na po sa ating third session after the health break? Oh, oh, walang problema. Right. Yes, pero yes, meron lang ako message sa iyo kasi yung isa namin ah. si Lian. <laughs> ah, si Ma'am Lian. Sige po. Ah, yes. Thank Sige you. Sige po, abangan po namin, Ma'am. Wala lang po siya sa waiting room at the moment, pero accept po namin agad, Ma'am. Sige, salamat. Alright, thank you very much, everyone. So, yun po, enjoy our um coffee po and uh, let's see you at 10.50 a.m. Thank you po.
Alright, good after- good morning po ulit to all of our participants. So, ayan, no? we're uh, 24 strong na po from our three different target LGUs. Of course, andyan po ang Calapan City from Oriental Mindoro, ang atin pong Provincial Government of Palawan, and of course, Rojas Palawan. Again, magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating participants. Uh, reminding lang po no, to accomplish our attendance link. Uh, Taka-chat lang po natin sa ating uh, chat box. We'll also be sharing yung ating pong participants toolkit kung saan po i-upload namin yung ating pong reference materials, relevant documents uh, after uh, every session po no, para po maging uh, uh, ano po natin, sanggunian sa lahat po ng ating mga ma- ma- learn sa atin pong sessions. Okay, so as um, discussed po and as agreed upon, we'll be proceeding po sa ating third session uh, for today and ito po yung attracting investments to the area and the role of the local government on investments promotion. So now po that we have been provided a uh, relevant context po no, on in national investments and it's a uh, kasama po ng mga batas nito ay mas magdedel naman po natin sa uh, rule na po at paano po natin ito i-operationalize at the local government level. So to discuss po muli, no, of course, we still have our colleagues from the DILG BLG. So ayun po, uh, the floor is yours po for our third session. Good afternoon po. I am Project Officer Jeremy Arboleda from the Bureau of Local Government Development and I'll be presenting po yung how can LGUs attract investments to the area and the role of the local government on investment promotion. Uh, here's the outline po of my presentation. First po uh, would be, uh, I'll be discussing, sorry po, I'll be discussing yung objectives ng investment promotion. Next po would be kung ano yung difference between the trade promotion and investment promotion. And lastly po kung ano yung roles ng ating LGUs on investment promotion. Uh, first, we need to ask, why do LGUs po need to encourage investments? Una po yung financial aspect. Uh, national tax allotment, previously era, or the internal revenue allotment is not enough. Alam naman po natin ang ating LGUs, nagde-drive po sila ng mga revenues from different local sources, including na yung tax revenues from real property tax, business tax, and non-tax revenues po from fees and charges. So kaya, kailangan po natin mag-encourage ng investment sa ating area so that we can generate more income for the LGU. Next po is the innovation and growth aspect. So the private sector po is the engine of innovation and growth. Private sector po, our businesses really drive growth by creating jobs, opening employment opportunities to ating area. The last po would be the role of local governments. The government's role is to make the environment in the area conducive for businesses to have sustainable growth. Part po ng role ng ating LGUs is to support yung ating mga businesses or the, support the private sector. So how do we make the environment conducive for businesses? One po is streamlining yung ating business processes uh, for that uh, para ang ating private sector achieve yung sinasabing sustainable growth. Sustainable growth meant businesses can retain, mapapanagpili po nila yung kanilang um, business sustain, ma-align natin sila investment. To define naman po ang investment promotion, investment promotion covers all activities and measures aimed at creating favorable conditions for to attract investment. Uh, as said earlier po, as said earlier, we have to create favorable conditions providing conducive mixed environment. Pwede po through EODB, so doing business, uh, pwede din po by streamlining our um, systems, and of course, by being accommodating sa ating investors. Flash po in your screen right now is your um, overall competitiveness uh, in the overall competitiveness index for cities and municipalities po. So may mga certain indicators po in uh, here na uh, nilabas ng BPI to this uh, to compute your competitiveness of cities and municipalities. First would be the economic dynamism. What would be economic dynamism? Ito po yung uh, merong mga bagong job creation, 
more skilled talent at increase po yung entrepreneurial activity sa ating areas. Next po would be the government efficiency, uh, infrastructure, and lastly would be resilience. Resilience means uh, mabilis po tayo makarecover uh, sa mga different disasters na experience po natin. Now let's go through po sa objectives ng investment promotions. First in, uh, objective po of investment promotion is to create a positive image of the area as an investment destination. So when invest so when an investor po visit a certain LGU, meron po silang um, certain expectation. Kaya very crucial po sa ating LGUs to recommend yung inyong area para po makapag-generate ng income and employment. Um, this is more important po sa mga LGUs um, located sa mga countryside or rural areas because kailangan po natin itakita sa kanila kung bakit po uh, kailangan nilang mag-invest sa ating area kaysa sa mga cities na marami na pong mga businesses or investment. Next objective po natin is to encourage investors towards desired investment areas and sectors. Uh, of course, ng ating LGU, meron silang good understanding of your own area, of your locality. So, uh, tayo po dapat mismo ang unang maghahanap or mag-distinguish po anong businesses yung mag-thrive sa ating locality. Paano po ba yun? Al Alamin natin yung mga economic drivers and at the same time, distinguish yung mga investment priority areas. Also, uh, kailangan pati ma-increase yung awareness ng mga possible investors na ating LGU. Open tayo sa mga iba't ibang kind iba-ibang klase ng businesses or may mga areas tayo na pwede mag-accommodate ng iba't-ibang businesses. Pwede mass housing, pwede agribusiness po ito, fishery, tourism. So, it would really vary sa inyong LGU kung ano yung kaya nyo pong i-offer. Uh, third objective po is to provide accurate and up-to-date information and services to potential investors. Uh, emphasizing po talaga tayo sa accurate and up-to-date information. Ang investors, pwede pong example would be kapag ang investors natin gusto mag-invest sa LGU, focus sa mining activities, pero sa ating latest TE, uh, hindi naman po tayo nag accept na ng mining invest investment. So, uh, kailangan po talaga what we give out sa ating mga investors are the clear uh, and not outdated information. Fourth objective po natin is to educate investors on how to do business in the area. Uh, educating them po on how on the doing business or the uh, yung um, steps or the different requirements so we can explain to them the application steps um different requirements for each application at kung ano yung mga licenses permits na kailangan nilang kunin muna sa LGU before they could conduct their business important po na ma-share agad natin ito sa ating mga investors na mag-visit sa ating uh, area Next po would be uh, to motivate existing uh, investors to maintain and expand their investments. As said earlier, very important po ang sustainable growth, meaning na kaya po mapanatili ng ating investors yung mga businesses nila sa ating area. Kailangan po uh, ating LGU sinusuportahan ang different businesses para ma-maintain at ma-expand yung kanilang investments. Bakit po importante na ma-maintain nila ito? Una kasi uh, uh, para po ito sa stability ng mga employment na ating locals that would be employed by different businesses. And at the same time, continuous yung income generation natin. Uh, kaya po important na maintain. But much better po that they could expand for more job generation po. Next would be the difference between trade promotion and investment promotion. So I'll be discussing po kung ano po yung difference between these two ones kasi we always assume na um, same po yung idea or this concept. So we, ha we have this common mistake na uh, parehas po silang dalawa. Una po, um, the outcome. There's the there, are, there, there are differences between the outcome of trade promotion and investment promotions. So if there is trade po, the outcome would be the sale of products. So ang ating owner, uh, they would earn sa mga goods na binagata nila or sa mga services na pinaprovide nila. However, kapag investment promotion naman po, ang outcome would be job generation. Uh, bakit po job generation? Because yung owner will look for employees, of course, for his or her business. 
so the owner will not just um uh they will not just earn profit but at the same time yung mga tao po nila would also earn income next po would be the target client so there's also difference between the target client for trade and investment promotion so ating trade promotion would be the supply officer uh, ating supply officer or any actually personnel they would be they would be the one to provide the goods and maybe also the ones to sell them however pag investments promotion naman po usually ang nagbibisit sa ating LG would be the company president or the CEO since they are actually planning to invest uh, in the area. For the timeline naman po, very short ang timeline po na ating trade promotion since um, it would really end once the sale is consummated. So it means kapag complete na, completed na po yung sale, na i-provide na nila yung products or na i-vend na nila yung mga items, that would be the end na of the, the contract or the uh, timeline. For the investment promotion naman po, the timeline is longer since may project implementation. So pwedeng ang uh, ating investors ang um, magde-develop sila ng manufacturing plant or mag-open sila ng office. So, mas mahaba po yung timeline uh, when, when investment promotion po yung nangyayari sa ating LGU. For the money involved naman po, for the trades promotion, ang money involved would be the procurement budget of a client. So, very fixed po. And if may difference, maliit lang po yung difference. So, uh, kung ano lang yung procurement budget nila, yun yung um, money na na-involve nila. However, pag investment promotions po, the money involved has more risk uh, because uh, therefore, um, the company's future may be at stake. Kasi nga po, pag nagsistart tayo ng business, of course, may mga risk. May competition, pwede environmental risk. So you cannot assume na you'll earn agad every quarter or you'll earn for your first year. Kasi ito talaga po yung nature ng investment. Kaya po, ang goal na ating LG talaga is to support uh, the different businesses and at the same time, huwag sila kaya ang malugi. For the trade promotion naman po for duration, duration would be for as long as there is demand for sales, as long as may um, may demand for sa example different fruits, there would be sales. Yun po yung duration na ating uh, trade promotion. However, with investment promotions po, the duration may last forever. Uh, it is open to expansion and our diversification. If a company uh, decides to expand, they could add more products. They could more employ. They could employ more people. How many people? And it's mahal. We can make generation investment promotion. Now, Paul, let's go the different um, investment promotions key players. So, bakit po uh, part of LG's economic development? First, because we are responsible in implementing different decisions in our area. Uh, at the same time, uh, meron po talaga tayong good understanding sa local conditions, sa problems, sa economic development, and yung potential na ating area. And lastly, tayo po yung pinakamalapit sa tao at at saka sa different stakeholders so we can easily conduct different consultation. Next would be the business groups or industry associations. It can be retail groups, um, sugar associations. Ito po yung mga nagpo-fall under this um, group po. Next are the chambers of commerce, financial institutions, and lastly, the academe. Important din po na uh, stakeholder ang ating academe to provide data sa ating LGUs on labor market studies, local products ng LGUs. So, dapat po talaga minamaximize ng ating LGU yung academe kasi not all LGUs po have their own provincial, city, or municipal decisions so, to provide them data. So, we can use, really utilize our academe to provide us accurate or up-to-date data. Now we go through the role na po ng ating local governments in investment promotions. First role would be to be the primary leader in the local economic development in sync with the national priorities. Emphasizing po in in sync. Bakit kailangan po? Kasi may mga instances na ating LGUs, they would create their priorities na hindi aligned sa national priorities. So during these instances, instances if nangyayari ito, uh, mahirapan po ating LGUs to support 
their priorities since less incentives available for them. Next would be indispensable partner to drive programs and projects in the local communities. As said earlier, closest po talaga ang LGU to the people and the different stakeholders so they can easily conduct consultations, programs, or projects that is needed by their locality. Third role po would be to be the key actor in investment promotion. Uh, as na list lang ko po kanina later kung ano yung mga um, different uh, key players. Uh, however, um, very, uh, malaki po talaga yung um, uh, role ng ating LGUs. First would be implementing, we understand the, the different local conditions. Uh, kaya po talaga, dapat maganda yung collaboration ng ating LGU with the private sector. Fourth role po ng ating LG is to directly impact an investor decision to establish its investment. How do we impact po yung decision ng ating investor through our local processes po? If the process po of our doing business would be too demanding, marami po tayong requirements, um, we still visit multiple LG departments, long processing time, hindi po talaga to attractive sa ating investors and it might also spread the news sa ibang investors. Kaya po, if dissatisfied sila, pwede silang maghanap ng ibang LGUs na mas accommodating sa kanila and conserve their needs better. And at the same time, share this to other investors also. The fifth role po is uh, the LG is the investor's window to the local economy and its access to immediate business needs. The LG po is the investor's window to the local economy. It means na lahat po ng kailangan information ng ating private sector and ating investors, they would also get it from the LGU. Kaya po important na meron na po kayong ready data of economic performance. So dito ang economic performance can be kung ano po yung GRDP nyo or gross, gross regional um, domestic product. Kung ano yung sector na nag-grow fastest sa inyo. Is it agriculture po ba? Industry? services and ano, ano pa yung mga economic accomplishments of, their, of your own um, LGU. So very important po talaga na um, we have the data to show every time may mga investors tayong mag-revisit sa ating LGU. And last tool po is uh, the LGU is the forefront of investment facilitation. Why po ang LGU ay forefront? Because once an investor visits a certain city, municipality, first stop po talaga nila would be the LGU. So dapat ang LGUs would make a good impression kasi they might not invest now, pero maybe in the future, they can plan other investments suitable sa inyong area. So pwede rin nila spread yung words sa ating other investors on how accommodating the isa business or the different um, possible um, investments that could be done in your area. Uh, ito na po yung investment promotion at the local level. So, first would be create an environment conducive for investments. How do we create it? You can pass and implement your own local investment and incentives code or having your own ECO. Parang meron kayong sound investment policy po talaga. Uh, and at the same time, you'll be identifying your investment priority areas and kung ano po yung mga incentives that you can give to your investors. Next would be promote the area as a viable uh, investment destination. So, um, dito po papasok talaga yung ating LEDI po and the establishment of a LEDI office or unit. As LEDI po, who will be the focal officer po talaga for local economic development. So, what would uh, the LEDI po do? He would conduct different proje projects and programs or campaigns para ma-execute the investment from um, promotion, they will be the ones to provide this information sa ating mga um, investors. Um, they would also be the one na mag-coordinate sa iba't ibang offices para ma-promote yung economic activity. And uh, very important po na ating LADI po also would promote and market yung ating LGUs para po to attract yung investors. Next po would be one-stop shop for investors. Uh, bakit po uh, one-stop shop ang ating LGUs? Kasi uh, ang ating LGUs have a good understanding po talaga of the local conditions, the problems, uh, and the potential of your area. Kaya po, um, when, the invest when an investor visit, 
they should receive all the necessary information na po. So um, may mga LGUs po that have their development in fiscal framework plan wherein they discuss yung investment priority areas, the spatial framework, the different ha hazards. And of course, um, of course, um, kailangan din natin maibigay yung information on doing business, the requirements, processing time, and all of those details. Fourth po would be efficient services for investors or business-friendly procedures. Now more than ever po, we really need to streamline na po yung guidelines natin for the business permit application or the renewal para po ma-attract yung ating investors at makadali din po yung kanilang um, pagpa-process. Uh, implement yung ating boss or the one-stop shop wherein various offices po are located so that makapastract yung processing of permits and licenses. And at the same time, the investors won't have to visit different offices. Um, LG should also be implementing your online application and renewal, especially now uh, with the ongoing pandemic, marami pa rin pong restrictions. So it would be really easier for investors kapag they could uh, apply or renew online. Uh, and at the same time, your online system po would also be helpful for our LGUs kasi po um, malalesen yung influx ng tao na pupunta sa ating LGU. And last po, very important would be setting the budget for investments promotion. Uh, alam naman po natin kung gaano kahalaga ang financial support para mapatupad yung different programs of the um, LEDIP office uh, para mapromote yung ating LGU. Promoting po can be in various forms, spreading different activities such as exhibits, expos, forums, campaigns. Uh, we can also conduct this online. Um, we can also use you at online platforms, especially our social media, because a lot of LGUs are now using their social media to post or share different announcements. We can also use this to post information uh, on the business data, profile of the province, investment fact sheet, cost of doing business. However, lahat po dapat ang nasa social media mag echo sa ating website kasi po mas credible talaga yung mga information when it comes from our website. So that would be the end of my presentation. But thank you very much, Bob. All right. Thank you very much, Ma'am Jeremy. So, ayan. At this point, po, no, we're uh, asking po again our dear participants if uh, may po ba tayong questions, clarifications, or um, siguro po kahit sharing or realizations po doon sa ating uh, kakatapos lang po na session. Yes, may I add? <laughs> Ay, yun pa. Sige pa, go ahead. Sige, pa, okay. So, why, where, where, where we encourage our investment promotion for this uh, target LGUs? Kasi, uh, since kayo po yung napili na um, according to the Balik Provincia Program, maraming kababayan nyo yung babalik po doon sa lugar ninyo, doon sa area nyo. So, mag-influx po yung inyong mga tao. So, Ang kinuha namin, baka may, paano kung bumalik po sila sa inyo at hindi po prepared yung LG, for example. Prepared in means na, syempre yung mga yan, nawalan po ng trabaho dito sa Metro Manila. So, pwede sila bumalik sa inyo, add na lang po sila mag-ano sa LG nyo. So, um, ganun din, kung hindi naman sila mag engage sa agri or whatever sa uh, resources ng LGU, yung mga nature mga ano po. So, mga ilangan sila ng mga trabaho. So, sa po natin sila pwedeng uh, ano, kung kukunti lang naman yung establishment within your locality po. Kaya sinasabi natin, it's good for investment promotion po na kailangan natin na baka kailangan na natin magdagdag pa ng mga establishment o yung mga companies na gusto nyo pundalin sa lo yung local government po. So, kasi ang um, yung investment promotion will help to generate jobs po. Yung mga yung, so, syempre, pag may nag-open po ng company dyan, ang kailangan po agad nila tao. So, we could give them incentives uh, tayo mag-provide ng ating mga tao sa kanilang mga bagong company na gusto nyo pong daling sa inyong lugar po. So, yun po. So, uh, syempre, makakatulong po silang malaki para tanggapin yung mga, ano, yung pwede yung ilagay nga as an incentive na kayo mag-provide. Syempre, you will train your constituents po. Syempre, uh, kung anong demand yung company na skills, yun po yung ibibigay natin sa kanila para maging incentive nila sa atin na hindi na sila kukuha ng ibang tao na magagaling sa ibang lugar, kundi within your locality na po. At least, 
uh, mabibigyan sila ng trabaho. Sa kayo nga po, kaya gusto natin magkaroon ng investment promotion para ma mapaunlad po yung lugar natin, mas dumami po yung ating mga investor. Kasi nga, sinasabi ko nga po, inadala ng BOI dito yung mga foreign investor or para at least uh, may, may LGU na sasalo. Mm, depende po doon sa requirements ng investor po. Kaya, uh, pwede rin naman yung within your locality. Kaya nga sabi natin, local investment. Kasi yung mga nandyan na po sa mga mga business or association nyo na po dyan, like kung may chamber of commerce kayo, from them, pwede silang kumuha ng mga tao na, I, I mean, to associate nila, business associates nila, na magpunta na sa Mundoro, sa Kalapan, o sa Palawan, mga ganun pong bagay. So lalo na ngayon, ah, uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng pandemic. Kaya we encourage investment promotion for our Seagull kasi uh, ito po yung maghahatak para mas dumami po yung mga mabigyan po ng trabaho sa ating lugar. That's all. Thank you. Alright, thank you very much po Ma'am Louie for that a uh, very important reminder po no kung gaano ka-important po itong ating uh, sessions sa three days po natin. And din nga po no, aside from that po ay tayo po ay nasa pandemic pa rin so talagang uh, lahat naman po tayo ay nangangailangan po no ng uh, pagpapaunlad sa ating kanya-kanyang um LGUs. So nag uh, manifest lang po yung LGU Roja. So no, no questions daw po so far. Thank you very much po for um Uh, answering po ano how about our other LGUs po from Kalapan and from the province of Palawan meron po ba tayong um, insights that we want to share or clarifications nga po alright checking lang po ang ating mga participants Okay, sige po, we can give you time po no, to uh, generate your questions or I guess po the discussions are pretty straightforward naman po. And yun nga po, hindi naman po bago sa atin ang uh, usapin po no, ng uh, investments and local economic development. So, can I get a thumbs up po if uh, from each LGU po siguro no, for Kalapan po? Uh, sure po ba tayo, final answer? Wala po tayong uh, clarifications or questions? Let us see po. Or you may chat po sa ating Zoom chat box to confirm po, no? From Kalapan City po. Okay, how about from uh, the province of Palawan? Okay na po. Ayun, so nag-manifest uh, din po yung ating um, PLGU Palawan and yun nga Rojas po. Sige po, uh, baka po we can give them some time nga po no, to process yung ating, uh, hindi lang po itong ating third session, pero yung ating pong naunang dalawa. So, yun, meron lang po dito tayong pumasok <laughs> from Anonymous. Uh, para lang po mas mapalawak po natin yung ating discussion, ayun po, um, sa ating pong mga BLGD colleagues. So, do we have a comparative study daw po on the fiscal implications on the cost of implementing investment strategies vis-a-vis -vis the gains from potential investment? So, yun po, ano po yung um, gains or ano nga po yung ating makukuha Meron po ba tayong para mga actual evidences po or yun nga po comparative studies in terms of yung gains nga po natin if we implement these investment strategies? Uh, for example, sa may Maropa po, you, you can, of course, sa Blagin, Occidental, Mindoro, now they need for their local investment po. Uh, kasi makikita... Kasi ang call lang naman po talaga sa investment promotion to attack more investment in your locality to, or expand your the businesses in within your locality. So yun lang po ang ano natin doon. Uh, Siyempre ang pinakagain dito, private sector. Kasi kung lalo na kung bibigyan yun sila ng incentive. But how this private sector will help you, di ba? Uh, employment. Income tax, diba? Nagbabayo sila ng tax sa inyo. Do you think it's your uh, GDP? At kung mag-employment naman po, at least yung mga walang trabaho, pwede po nilang magbigyan ng trabaho. Kasi sa pala sila kukuha po ng tao, within your locality din naman. So, uh, this is always local economic development. Sabi nga natin, 
para bakit nagpupunta yung mga tao sa Metro Manila? Kasi walang makuhan trabaho within your locality. So, dito sila magsisiksikan sa Manila. Ngayon, nag 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 nagkaroon ng pandemic, marami pong napektuhan, nawalan ng trabaho, nagkakahaw-haw, madali, mas madali pong hawahan kay, kumpara po sa lugar ninyo. So, yun po, it gains na uh, mas maganda po yun na wala nang aalis kasi di ba uh, this is economic ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito is economy hanggang maari yung pera sana within your locality umiikot sa inyong locality lang hindi lumalabas di ba so kung alibawa yung mang, walang walang investment area do sa lugar wala kayong balak mag karo ng mga establishment do sa lugar niyo wala kayong balak na increase yung mga company niyo within your locality wag Mag magkakasya na lang po baka tayo sa ganun, di ba? We need to boom our economy, our local economy to help the national economy po. So yung mga ganun bagay po. So it can help uh, the investment promotion for our existing uh, local businessman to improve, mag-retain, mag-expand, hanggang maaaring mag-expand. Kasi if we will not go to do a good, good service to them, aalis po sila sa inyo. So ano pong mangyayari? Babagsak na medyo mabahami, mawawala ng trabaho, liliit ang collection nyo po, di ba? So yun po, uh, just a lot of, uh, nagpo na po sa uh, investment, promotion like Iloilo, alam nyo naman kung bigyang nagbumang Iloilo, kung may natin kayo ikumpara sa Cebu, uh, masyado na uh, bumang LG, um, kung po, PPP karamihan sa Cebu eh. Tapos, uh, kagaya the Oro City. So, uh, we will not uh, give our LTU as a means of attraction for more investment and for extent, expansion and retention of your existing businesses po. Thank you. Yan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Louie. So, ayun po, no? basically po, um, ang init po no, for our LGUs is we get to serve po our constituents better po talaga and uh, we can provide, uh, yun nga po, better uh, services po and opportunities for them. So uh, hopefully po that um, kubaga mas emphasizes po no yung uh, value nga po ng ating discussions today and for the succeeding day. So with that po, meron po bang mga bagong questions or we're okay naman na po? Okay, sige. Uh, nag, nag thumbs up lang rin po yung ulit yung Rojas Palawan. Thank you very much po. And yung ating pong uh, province of Palawan. Thank you very much din po. Okay, so... Okay, so it's um 11.22 a.m. po. Uh, it looks like we'll be having an early lunch po, ano? Uh, because uh, we only have two remaining sessions or discussions uh, for the rest of uh, the day. Pero ito nga po medyo um, mahaba-haba na po yung ating mga susunod na discussion. So with that po, is it okay po for everyone to have our uh, an early lunch break po? Ayun, thank you very much po from Calapan City. Maraming salamat din po. Right. So, is it okay po sa ating mga participants if we have an early lunch break and uh, balik po tayo at exactly 1 p.m. po to continue the rest of uh, the discussions for today, which are two sessions na lang naman po. All right. So, it's now 11:23 a.m. Uh, hopefully po everyone's back at exactly 1 p.m. para po uh, mas continue po natin no yung momentum ng ating discussion. And remind lang rin po namin everyone no um, parang hindi pa po yata lahat ng ating uh, participants ay nakapag-accomplish po ng ating attendance form. So sharing lang po ulit right now, no? Uh, very important um, input po sa amin yung inyong uh, pre-test as well as uh, required po yung ating login and log out per day in order for us to issue po yung inyong pong certificate of participation. So regardless po if tayo po ay naka-group viewing, uh, need po namin yung individual input or entry no per participant po uh, per LGU. So maraming maraming salamat po and um, have a happy early launch. Uh, we know po no, napaka-busy po natin ngayong Monday pero maraming maraming salamat po for being with us. Ayan, see you at 1pm everyone. Maraming salamat po Ma'am Louie and uh, everyone po sa ating mga colleagues from BLG. See you po at 1pm. Yeah.
Okay, so magandang takhali po ulit sa lahat. Hopefully, I, everyone's uh, had a ano po, no, masarap na lunch at tayo po ay ready na for our afternoon session. So, we have four minutes naman po before uh, it's exactly 1pm. We'll take this opportunity na lang po to share some of our uh, training reminders as well as uh, yun po, um, yun po, share our training reminders before po we officially proceed to our afternoon sessions. All right. So, ayun po, pag number one po, since uh, we'll be having up uh, workshops tomorrow pa naman po and during our third day, pero para naman po makita namin sino po yung aming mga kasamahan na, ayan, strong at 20 participants na po and I believe na group viewing naman po yung ating ibang LGU participants. So, uh, definitely yun po, maraming salamat po no, sa uh, pagdalo po sa amin given na uh, we all have a busy Monday. So, thank you so much po. So, ayun nga po, palagay na lang po ng ating LGU name in front of our full names para po magkakilanlan po tayo. And second po, um, kindly mute your microphone and turn on your video po. Uh, especially later po, no, may performance levels po yata yung ating icebreaker for this afternoon. So, makikisuyo na lang po kami to turn on your video later po, if ever lang naman kailanganin. Pero you may opt to turn it off to save internet bandwidth. And yung atin pong most important uh, reminder po siguro, no, uh, so far, ay uh, yung atin pong pag-login doon po sa ating attendance form. Uh, twice daily po yan, isang login and, and isang log out per day. So, so far po yung login pa lang naman po for November 22 yung kailangan po nating ma-accomplish uh, as of the moment. So, ito po yung maging aming sole basis um, sa pagbigay po ng certificate of participation. And lastly po, since uh, yung nga po, we value knowledge sharing, we'll be giving all the references, presentation materials, and relevant documents po as well as templates na atin pong uh, madadaanan uh, during the course of our three-day activity. And yan po ay makikita nyo sa ating participants toolkit na ishat din po natin later. And maraming salamat po. Okay, so it's um, two minutes po before 1 p.m. We'd like to check lang po no, kung sino na po yung mga nakabalik and uh, sino po yung mga nadagdag sa ating mga kasamahan. So first po ay... Clap react po tayo sa mga taga Kalapan City. Ayan, teka po. Ayan, clap react. <laughs> Meron po tayo mga training management team na nasa Kalapan City din po ngayon. So, ayan, tingnan nga po natin. Alright, so may apat po na nag-clap. Thank you very much po. Okay, maraming salamat po kay uh, City Councilor Josie Neria, kama Mary Suzette C. Lopez. Hello po, magandang hapon po and welcome po sa ating uh, afternoon session. So, thank you po for the participation. Second naman po ay pa-thumbs up naman po and kay Sir Eder Redublo. Ayan, thank you very much po. All right. Uh, next naman po, pa-thumbs up naman po sa atin po mga taga-province of Palawan. So ayan, ako po ay nandito sa DILG Provincial Office. So tayo po ay mga nasa iisang land lang. <laughs> so ayan, marami namin po tayong mga kasamahan na nakabalik po no, from uh, PGP. So tingnan po natin. Alright, maraming salamat po. Uh, next naman po ay ang atin po mga taga Rojas Palawan. So heart react naman po tayo kung tayo po ay uh, taga Rojas Palawan. So let's see po. I believe po naka-group viewing po sila. So baka po nag-set up pa lang po ulit. Okay. Let's see po. Ayun, tama po naka-group viewing pa rin po sila. Okay, ayan po. So it's one minute before um, 1 p.m. And uh, of course po, no, maraming salamat po dun sa ating mga colleagues from the DILGBLGD and uh, makakasama pa rin po natin sila ngayong hapon. So before po we proceed to our uh, next session, so may dalawang, I believe po may dalawang sessions na lang po, po tayo for the afternoon. Uh, para naman po mas uh, ganahan po tayo sa ating afternoon session ay pinatawagan po namin ang uh, pinakamaganda po namin LGO2 sa DILG Mimaropa, si Ms. Cheryl Martinez to give us our afternoon energizer. Good afternoon, Ma'am Cheryl. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Chelsea, sa napakagandang introduction. Ang ganda ko, grabe. Anyway, so ayan na nga po. Um, this afternoon, we're going to have a very, um, a very, ano nga ba, a very 
energetic and performance level energizer for this afternoon. So, i-upgrade lang po natin yung ating song tanong. So, eto po. Let me just share my screen po. So, ayan. So, ang title po na ating energizer for this afternoon ay Sing It. So, um, magpapakita po tayo ng lyrics ng song and then you'll have to guess the title to get one point. So, yun pong pinakaunang makakapag-guess ng title will have the chance to sing the song para makakuha po siya ng another two points. So, meron po tayong three points per uh, per item. So, okay po ba? Pwede po bang makakita ng thumbs up or heart react or kahit na anong reaction sa ating mga participants para sa ating energizer for this afternoon. At syempre, ang bonggang-bonggang mananalo sa araw na ito ay mananalo ng 300 peso load. Okay po? Mukhang si Master Sidney Pamela Bihasa lang po ang ready. Parang siya lang nakit na ako nag-react. Ayan. So ready na po? So first question. Ayan. Ito po ang lyrics. Pwede. Kailangan nyo lang pong itype sa ating chat box kung ano ang title ng kanta na iyan. Ayan. Meron na po tayong first. Tingnan natin. Forevermore. Ang sagot ni ma'am. So yan ba ang tamang sagot? Tama po. So merong one point for ma'am Jenny of PLGU Palawan. So, to get another two points, you have to sing po yung lyrics na naka-flash sa ating screen. Pwede po tayo mag-unmute, Ma'am Jenny. Meron po tayong... Ayan, Ma'am Jenny, ready na ba? Ma'am Jenny Socrates. Ms. Che, paano, paano daw po yun? Wala daw po siyang audio. Pwede daw po bang mag-phone a friend? Sino pong phone a friend natin, ma'am? Sino po, ma'am Jenny, ang from PLGU Palawan ang inyo pong inanominate? <laughs> Siguro si ma'am ano? Ma'am Maribel. <laughs> ma'am Maribel Bunyi. <laughs> Okay, Sige. para mo Okay, ang... I will sing. Kakantayin ko ba, ma'am? Para sa yes three po. points ni Miss Jenny. Yes po. Sige, ah. one, two, three. You were just a dream that I once knew. Ay, lahat ba to? I never yes, thought I would be right for you. I just can't compare you with anything in this world. You're all I need to be with forevermore. Tama na po. Ayan, very, isang mabonggang-bonggang palakpak naman po para kay Ma'am Maribel Bunyi. So, three points for Palawan. Ayan, si Ma'am Jenny Socrates. Three points. Next question po. So, ayan, ang tamang sagot po ay forevermore. Next po. Ayan, ano po kaya ang title ng kanta na ito? <laughs> parang ano, alam parang Ma'am Maribel, ma-showcase niyo po yung inyong singing talent sa hapong ito dahil si Ma'am Jenny Socrates na naman po ang unang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Top of the world. So, Ma'am Maribel, are you ready? <laughs> Ma'am Maribel, andyan pa po ba kayo? Or baka pong may taga-ibang PL, taga-PLGU Palawan na gusto pong maka-phone a friend. <laughs> From Palawan po. Ayan, si Mama Rebel po ata ulit. Gusto niya. Naghaha po siya. For another three points, Mama Rebel. Parang, 
<laughs> something in the are not the same. Maribel, medyo nakakat po ata ang audio nyo. Ayan, baka, baka okay na po yun, Miss Chem. May paano lang po. Oo nga. Pasnipet lang ang ating nalang. Oo nga. <laughs> Total nag-anos kanina si Miss Ivy. Si Miss Ivy Diane Piramide. Sabi niya kanya, go, Ma'am Maribel. O, Miss Ivy, <laughs> tapusin mo po yung kanta. Saan ba ako naputol po? Sorry. Ay, ay ma'am. Doon po. Yung narinig lang namin ma'am yung something in the wind. Ah, okay. Sige. Something in the wind has learned my name. And it's telling me that things are not the same. In the leaves on the trees. In the touch of the breeze. There's a pleasing sense of happiness for me. Pwede po iba Yay! naman. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mar- marami pa po ba tayong taga-Palawan dito na LGU? Kasi parang ano eh, lagi nakakakuha ng tamang sagot si Ma'am Jenny Socrates. <laughs> Sige po. So, next po. So, ito po, tamang sagot. Top of the world. Next po. Ayan. Ano po kaya ang title ng OPM song na ito? Pag si Ma'am Jenny po ulit yung sumagot, si Miss Ivy Dayan, pero midi po yung kahanta. <laughs> Ayan, wala pong ano, nakakaalam ng kantang to. Baka pwedeng hint daw po, Miss Che. Ano siya? Two words. Ayun. Ay, sino ito? Nag-direct message po sa akin. Si... Uh, Ayan. Trust lang daw po, pero siya po ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Si Miss Sydney Pamela Bihasa. Isang lahi. Tama. Ayan. Ma'am Sydney, you have one point. So to get three points, kailangan mo po itong kantahin, Ma'am Sydney. Or Ma'am Sydney, bilang nasa Kalapa naman po kayo ngayon, baka po pwedeng may i-phone a friend po kayo sa mga taga-Kalapan City natin tapos sa kanila po pupunta yung points. If okay naman sa inyo, Ma'am Sydney. Andito po ba si Sir Eder? O si Ma'am Sol? Dito si Sir Eder. Ayan. O, oh, ayan. Sir, Sir Eder. Sir Eder. <laughs> Passing the mic po kay Sir Eder. Sir Eder? Counting up to five po. Pag hindi po nagparamdam si Sir Eder, si Ma'am Sydney po, may labihasa po ang kakanta. One, two, four, five. Okay, so ayan. Panahon na po para marinig natin ang singing voice ni Ms. Sydney Pamela Bihasa. Go, Ma'am Sydney. Ah, wig na po ako dun sa ano po, sa two points. Ayan, Sir Eder daw. Wala Ayan, siyang Sir sorry. Eder. Ayan, representative na daw po. Sino po kaya? O kahit sino lang po sa kalapan, hmm. unmute and sing. Si Sir Amar po ba nandito? Parang wala si O, oh, wala. Okay po. Ma'am Sydney, go. Sige po, anyone po from Kalapan? Si ate, ano ate na dito? Wait lang. Baka po masyadong mataas po yung kanta. For... <laughs> Ma'am Sydney, yung may kaya. Apo. At saka po, ano, wala pong kakanta. Sige, one point lang po. Pag hindi niyo po ito kakanta, ako po yung kakanta. <laughs> anyway, so ayan. So pa ang 
tamang sagot po ay isang lahi. So, para po kantahin yung itong lyrics na ito, tinatawagan po natin yung aming uh, kasamahan sa LGCDD, si Dennis De Ramos. Sir Dennis. Wala siya. Anyway, so ayan po, isang lahi. Siguro naman alam natin tong kanta na ito. Wala po bang gustong ano, sumalo ng pagkanta for two points. Parang parang pass na po yata, Miss Jen. <laughs> Ayaw nila. Ayun oh. niya, pang ano nga yung singing contest. Ah, anhin ko pa. Tito sa char. Okay, so next po. Isang lahi. So, eh, next, next song po. Ayan, ano po kaya ang title ng kanta na ito? Wala po? Living, ay hindi po siya living on a jet plane. Mas luma po ata. <laughs> Isang hula pa, Sir Jerome. Three words po ito. Three words. Ayun. Oh, si Ma'am Maribel. Buni, stuck on you. Ayan, Ma'am Maribel. It's your time to sing again. Si Ma'am Ivy. Oh, si Ma'am Ivy. Ayan, Ma'am Ivy. Diane Piramide. Kayo daw po ang kumanta. Ma'am Che, sorry. Hindi ko, po, hindi ko po alam yung song. Hindi mo siya alam. Ma'am Ma Aribel, hindi niya raw po alam. Sige na nga. Batang bata pa si Ma'am Ivy. <laughs> o, oh, sige na game. Oh, I'm living on that midnight train tomorrow. And I know just where I'm going. Pack up my troubles and I'll throw them all away. Cause this time, little, cause this time, little darling, I'm coming home to stay. Yay! Yes, Isang masigabong palakpakan para kay Ma'am Maribel Buni. Three points po. So, mukhang hasang-hasa sa karaoke si Ma'am Maribel. <laughs> Uwi na ako po. <laughs> Wag ba? Ano lang ito? Katuwaan lang. So, ayan. Stop on you. So, uh, update po sa ating score. Si Ma'am Jenny, six points. Ma'am Sydney, one point. Ma'am Maribel, three points. Next song po. O, ayan. Sikat na sikat. Ano pong title ng song na yan? Ayan, Sir Jerome. Tama. Bohemian Rhapsody. Sir Jerome, sing it. No. <laughs> Bakit naman po kayo mga no audio? So, Sir Jerome, sino po ang gusto niyong kumanta? Or meron po bang gusto? I nominate Mary Zuzette Lopez. So, Ma'am Zuzette. From Calapan City. Go, Ma'am. Ma'am Suzette? Sorry, no. <laughs> Iba po yung no audio sa no voice. Tama po ba? <laughs> okay lang yan, ma'am. Wala, wala pong judger dito. Meron po yung audio. Baka po may gustong mag-steal sa atin pong ibang... Oo nga. Meron bang gustong kumanta nito from the queen? O wala? Ayaw nyo. Masyado ba siyang mataas para sa alauna ng hapon? Go for three points! Yes, ma'am!
Wala po. Ayaw. <laughs> Sige, we'll count. One, two, three. So, ayaw po ni Ma'am Suset. Anyway, so next question po tayo. So, ang tamang sagot, Bohemian Rhapsody. So, next question po tayo. Ayan, ano pong title ng song na yan? Feeling ko ito alam to ni Miss Ivy. Yeah, baka hint po ulit, Miss Che. Ayan, si Ma'am Luz. Si Ma'am Ay, Louis. si Ma'am Louie. Father and son. Yes, Ma'am Louie, correct po. Gusto niyo po bang kantahin ang father and son, Ma'am Louie? Meron akong import dito. Go, ma'am. Dali na, dali na, father and son. Oo, father and son. I was once like you are now. Ay, ito mo dati siya. Oo, yun na. Yun na, pwede ka na mo sa iyo. Sige na, ikaw na, kaya mo yan. Ano mo pa rin? Father and son, hindi nga niya alam ito. No, mas maganda pa. Ayaw na akin na in-import. Ano pa naman? Si Ray Valera. Ay, ma'am, Louie. Hindi na, hindi ko kaya. Ayaw nung singer ko. At yan, magkakalap ako ng singer. Magagana pa ako ng singer ko. Pwedeng chorus, ma'am. Marami kayong kakanta. Walang problema. Ay, chorus daw. Alika na, Bong. Sige, sa iba na lang yung points ng kakanta. Hindi. <laughs> anyway, o oh, sino pong gusto? Ay, yan. Si from, ano po? From Sir, Je- Sir Jerome? Wala ka lang audio. Kaya pala malakas yung loob ni Sir Jerome. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Meron ka kanta na. Ayun yung ano. May kakanta na. Sige sir. Ay sige ma'am. So umpisa mo. Oo. Oh, 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 When you found something going on. But take your time, think a lot. Think of everything you got, for you still be here tomorrow, but your dreams may not. Wow! Ray Valerang, Ray Valerang ako talaga. <laughs> Parang gusto natin siyang bigyan ng 100 points, pero hindi pwede. Three points lang, sir. Pero isang masigabong palakpakan pa sa so singer ni Ma'am Louie. Thank you, <laughs> si Ray Bolero. <laughs> <laughs> Ang Ray Bolero ng BLG. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Ayan, thank you very much po. Next song po tayo. Ayan, so father and son. Next song po. Last na po ata ito. Oh, last na po ata ito. Ito po, go, go, na, go na po natin ito sa atin po mga participants. Kayang-kaya po natin ito. Bago-bago po ito. <laughs> Nag-iisang bago-bago na kanta. So, pwede pa pong humabol si Ma'am Maribel and si Ma'am Louie kasi may six points si Ma'am Jenny. Wala po ba na? Uh, Ed Sheeran po ito na kanta. Merong ano, may thinking sa title I, kinakanta niya. Kinakanta pa po yata nila yung buong chorus. Sinahanap po sa <laughs> <Ayan. laughs> Ayan, yung unang word po niya ay thinking. Question mo. Ayan, si Ma'am Jenny Socrates. Thinking out loud. Tama po. So, seven points po si Ma'am Jenny Socrates. Pero, wala pong kakanta. Ayan. It's your time to shine, Miss Chelsea. Para naman marinig natin yung ating host, yung nakumanta sa hapon na ito. 
Apo, uh, ininominate ko pa lang po sana si Ma'am Tina from DILG Palawan po bilang PLGU po ang ano po nag-phone a friend. Ay, ayan si Ma'am Tina. Go. Ah, sige po. Bukas na lang daw po siya. Oh, sige. Si Miss Chelsea uh-huh. na muna. Since nandiyan ka naman sa Palawan PO. Apo, ah, nagpe-perform na po sila dito sa harap. Sige, one, two, three. Baka mag-jacket po kayo, baka po kasi malamigan kayo. <laughs> When your legs don't work like they used to before. And I can't sweep you off of your feet. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? Will your eyes still smile from your cheeks? Ayan. So, sige po. Sa kanila na yung two points. Bilang nasa palawan naman po tayo. Ayan. Thank you very much, Miss Chelsea. Maraming nasiyahan sa performance mo. Sigurado ako. So, ayan. Ang nanalo po na ating 300 peso load ay si Ma'am Jenny Socrates ng PLGU Palawan. Thank you very much po. I hope you enjoyed our icebreaker for this afternoon. Over to you, Miss Chelsea. Okay. Thank you very much, Miss Che. So, ano po, si Miss Che po ang ating tagapaghatid ng kasiyahan sa next two days pa, every after lunch. So, kung may request po kayong mga games, chat nyo na lang po sa amin. And kay Ma'am Jenny po, chat nyo po sa amin yung inyong phone number and kung anong network po kayo para po ma-send po namin yung code ng inyong 300 pesos load. Ayan. Thank you so much everyone. At least po, nagkaroon po tayo ng chance kahit pa paano po nang marinig yung inyong mga boses. Kaya naman po pala medyo shy type po tayo sa open forum dahil wala naman po pala tayo mga audio. So, uh, if may questions po kayo later, pwede nyo naman pong i-chat sa ating Zoom chat box. Okay po? So, again, no, quick roll call lang po. Uh, I believe everyone's on board naman na po ulit. So maraming maraming salamat. Ayun po, hello po sa Kalapan City. Ayun, nakita po natin na nandito na rin po agad sila no and sa PGP and of course sa ating pong Rojas Palawan. So ngayon po ay dadako na po tayo sa ating last two sessions for today. And uh, yun nga po no mas uh, context setting po yung naging focus natin kanina ng ubaga. Pero ngayong hapon po ay uh, magde-delve na po tayo doon nga po sa ating main uh, sort of our main topics. And una po diyan yung presentation nga po ng DILG MC ng pag uh, lilipat po or pagbabago or pag-upgrade po ng ating LEPO to a LEDI po or LEDI office. So, para po i-discuss ito, kasamahan pa rin po natin ang uh, mga colleagues natin na nakita po natin very talented po ano from the DILG Bureau of Local Government Development. So, good afternoon po sa atin pong mga colleagues from DILG BLGD ulit. Good afternoon everyone. Share lang ni Mai. Oh, ah, sige po ma'am. Ayan, thank you. Uh, hopefully, uh, kanina, nabanggit naman yung mga participants na may mga lady po na nandito na ngayon, di ba? So, sa dalila, may ingay, sige. <laughs> Go lang po ma'am. Ang ingay, nandito kasi kami sa office eh. Kasi mayroong drug test. So, ayan, marami ito. Ayan, good afternoon. Uh, hopefully, uh, sa mga lady po po na nandito, uh, sana maging permanent na po yung position natin. So, uh, with this uh, devolution po, uh, although hindi naman to ang priority, kasi siyempre yung mga devolved services naman po yung priority, kaya po na magbibigyan kayo ng additional na karagdagang nata, nata na tao na yun, hindi na ire. So yun po, uh, hopefully, uh, pag na yung mga LGU, mailagay nyo sa inyong devolution transition plan, yung creation ng office at ng permanency ng lady po nyo. Kasi paganda din po ito na magkagamit natin for investment promotion. So, now I will uh, tackle the DILG MC 2020-01 uh, po ang ating ano, ang guidelines on promoting local economic development and investment promotion and establishment of LEDIP office our unit po. Next. So, the content of my presentation po, I will discuss the background, the purpose, the legal compliance scope and coverage, policy content and guidelines, and of course, the funding and the monitoring po ng ating mga uh, leti po. Next. 
So, uh, as a background po, we issued before the DILGMC 2010-113, which encourages LGUs, particularly province, lang muna, saka cities, to uh, designate a local economic and investment promotions officer as economic partner in attracting more investment to enhance local economic activities. So, one of the functions is to spearhead the the formulation of the local investment code and the investment promotion to local government units. Next. So, there, uh, based on the memorandum circular in 2010, it, uh, it identifies the role of the label, which facilitates the uh, pre preparation, coordination, execution of local economic and investment promotion policies projects and activities of the provincial or the city government, which is means uh, kasama na po dito yung liig na uh, alam natin mga incentives na pwede natin ibigay just in case may mag-locate ng mga businesses sa ating locality po. And for, for the enhancement of our economic development. Then, uh, facilitate the establishment of aggressive, systematic, coordinated, sustained promotion and marketing the LGU as an investment location. Kasi sinasabi po nila na sino ba pwede makausap sa LGU pagdating sa investment promotion? Ang kinuha nila, pwede tourism, tourism officer. Kasi uh, at least alam niya yung kung tourist destination area, ang lugar. So, pwede niyang i yung tourism industry ng um, locality. Pag local planning officer naman, uh, pwede naman di siya maging label, pero kasi ang local planning officer, alam niya po lahat yung data, di ba? For the LGU, siya nag spearhead ng CDP, ng CLUP, ng local government units. But still, this is still a dual function for them. Kung, may, kung tourism officer ka, at least uh, busy ka rin sa mga mga patawag ng Department of Tourism and other NGOs for tourism. Pag planning officer ka, busy ka din sa uh, planning ng LGU. So, kaya sa nasabi namin na dapat ng mga LGUs, mag magkaroon ng isang label po. Pero as of now, ngayon yung nangyayari, nagiging dual function po sila. Next. Then, of course, yan, it's more important to provide basic information about business potentials of the LGU, including LGU services to prospective investors to attract more investment to flow into the community. Uh, like Palawan, di ba? Bilang na lang may darating na investors sa Palawan, gusto mag-invest. Tapos wala silang makakapusap na, basic, na kailangan nilang basic information. For example, kailangan nilang uh, ano ba yung mga product resource ng one. Uh, for example, kung may banana kayo, for example, na ini-import or export siyempre uh, alam ng investor na uh, itong Palawan, uh, okay siya sa pagdating sa banana or which over Kalapan. So, pag nagtanong sila, ilang banana yung nakaharvest ng isang LGU, walang may bigay na information sa LGU. So, at least sila po, with the coordination with other local government, with other departments in the local government units, makakapagbigay siya ng information. May, may kausap si investor pagdating po sa ganun bagay. So, then, uh, may isang LGU po na may, is, uh, may isang investor na gusto magtayo ng isang famous chain restaurant sa ate, dyan sa kanilang lugar. Pero uh, walang maibigay na information yung isang lipo or the city itself. Wala kung saan maibigay na information. So sayang yun, ibis na magkaroon ng additional earnings or collection of tax si LGU na wala pa isang establishment na yun. Kasi they cannot give information, di ba? Then, establish a local economic database with uh, containing relevant facts and figures. Yun, sinasabi natin pagdating sa investment promotion, we should enhance our LGU website kasi hindi naman, uh, may nakikita nga siyang potential sa inyo, pero how about uh, yung mga ease of doing business, the cost of doing business in your LGU, wala siyang makita ng ganong information. Misan, tinitingnan niya yan sa inyong website. Pag inyong website, eh, kulang ko lang information, Ibis na gusto niya mag-invest sa lugar niyo, aalis po siya kasi wala siya makuha ng information. Kaya dapat meron tayong mga at least mga basic uh, ano ba yung mga uh, common uh, database na pwede nating magamit sa mga uh, ano na LGU. So yung LIPO po. So the LIPO will collate all the information 
kasi sa kanya magagalit she, she will the one will be the one to provide the information na kailangan ng isang investor dapat may database ang LGU para sa pagkukuha ni Leho po lalo na yung mga yung mga products niyo po diyan na kasi kumbaga yun ang panghatak niyo po sa isang investor na magagamit nila for their manufacturing business for their export so uh, to locate their businesses is sa inyong locality next so the LIFO also will coordinate with other offices in promotion of economic activities such as planning and development, treasury and budget offices, and the local sangkunian. Kaya ang local sangkunian na magka-approve ng liik, si planning, yung mga date na kailangan for planning, tapos mga iba pa offices na kailangan i-coordinate ni LIFO po. Then, coordinate with the private sector investment promotion campaign. Sabi ko nga, yung mga local businessman nyo, they will be the one to promote your LGUs to other businesses, uh, business sectors. So, yun po. So, dapat may rapport tayo, lalo na si Lepo, may rapport siya sa mga different uh, business sector organization within your LGU, like yung mga tourism, uh, mga tourism sector, uh, Manufacturing, kung may manufacturing sector sa inyong lugar, mga, yan lahat, even MSMEs, kahit maliliit po yan, still, they, uh, they could, uh, baga, pwede siyang word to mouth niya yung promotion ng inyong LGU. Kaya, kung walang, walang lay po, at magkakapag-coordinate sa kanila, parang feeling nila pinabayaan po natin sila. So, yun. Then, conduct information dissemination on local government policies or investment, investment wage law, required permit, etc. So, syempre, isang locator, isang businessman, kung magtatayo siya ng business sa inyong LGU, ingay niya ito yung mga information na ito. So, syempre, kailangan talaga natin the ease and cost of doing business. Kaya sinasabi natin kanina, sinabi ko ni May, na dapat LGUs ay may ease of doing business kasi kukuha ng permit yan, kung kukuha ng building permit yan, at least ang streamlined process na po ang ating LGUs. So, siya mag-up, pwede yung magbigay ng information sa, sa ating uh, locator or business for the investor. And also, the LIPO will coordinate with with uh, Ay, naulit. Sige, pakibali. Next na lang. So, the RIPOL, uh, in this administration po, uh, na-expand po yung role ng lay po natin. So, sabi nga natin, uh, hindi lang lay po siya local economic investment promotions officer, but still, the whole local economic development po, yung titina ng isang lay po. Kaya, naging lady po na po siya. So, next. So, yan po, so yung ating current administration is uh, going to global competitiveness ranking po tayo. So, as we sustain our market in the global economy, the national government aims to bolster the local economic development kasi malaking part po ng LGU pagdating sa uh, national development, di ba? So, yung ating po ng gross domestic product will help LGUs po. Next. Para hindi na rin tayo maging era dependent o nata dependent po. Next. So this, uh, also this uh, MC po ng lady po ngayon, I uh, suppose the public-private partnership is uh, to increase our, our annual infrastructure spending to public-private partnership. Kaya ang BOI po, isinama na nila sa bibigyan national national government, uh, bibigyan ng incentives for those who will go to with a public-private partnership. Lahat ng investor na pupunta na makikipag-PPP sa Pilipinas po ay binibigyan na rin po nila ng incentives. Also, uh, because of the presence of SGLG under business friendliness and competitiveness essential area. So, kasama po sa one of the indicators yung presence ng isang labo or let it So, this is in lieu of Mandanas po na, uh, na kinukuha natin na kung pwede mabigyan nga ng, ng permanent, permanent position ng ating mga lady po at hindi sila maging dual personality. Next. So, uh, 
generally the purpose of this uh MC po na 2020-01 uh hindi lang po city and municipal uh, hindi lang po cities and provinces which includes the ano na po ang uh, ating mga cities and municipalities at the same time uh hindi lang po nag-iisa na si Lepo o Lady po na tutulong for investment promotion in the locality but to create an office na for them next so the specific objectives of the MC is to span the role of the Lady po uh, towards local economic development and clearly they define the role of Lady office and units and composition. So makikita natin dito sa MC na to, ano ba yung mga divisions under this Lady office. Tapos, and to clearly define the functions and required competencies and minimum qualification requirements of the Lady po system. So the legal compliance of this MC is the local government code uh, nandiyan po yun to enhance economic prosperity and promote full employment that will help for the, the investment promotion. Uh, also the mga efficient effective implementation of the development plans, program objectives and priorities and to create their own sources of revenue and deliver tasks. So yun po. So, section 14 and 16 and section 18 of the local government code. Next. Also, we include the Philippine Development Plan for 2017 to 2022, uh, chapter 15 particularly, ensuring sound microeconomic policy with a sector outcome responsible strategy and supportive fiscal sector. Uh, also, the JILG MC 2010-113, the Memorandum Circular on Public-Private Partnership and the Joint Memorandum Circular with the PPP Center and the ILG for the Supplemental Guidance of LGUP4. Yeah, okay, next. Next time. Okay, so yun, uh, Dito po, uh, sino ba yung sinasabi natin lady, a uh, lady po or lady po? So, he's the focal person in the LGU whose function is to facilitate the preparation, coordination, and execution of local economic development and investment promotion policies, programs, projects, and activities at the LGU level. So, uh, kayo po yung, kumbaga, uh, future thinking, kung anong gusto mangyari sa LGU and how you will develop your LGU towards local economic development. Next. So, dapat ang isang lady po, may dapat may widest understanding on the local economy, cultural and political environment. So, pag nagtanong po sa investor, uh, ano ba yung pwede namin invest dito, saan po kami pwede makatulong, masasagot po ng isang lady po. Ano ba yung political environment dito sa LGU? Ano ba yung mga uh, culture na sinus sinusunod dito sa LGU para makapag-adapt ang isang investor? So, yun po. So, dapat uh, alam po ni lady po lahat yun. Marami po tanong sa investor, uh, la, uh, although hindi, Kilala, alam niya may ganun kayong product, for example, pero do, kaya nga gusto niya mag-invest because of that certain product. But on the ins and outs of the LGU, at least alam dapat po ni Lady po yun. Strong and identifying and promoting local community and economic development projects and initiatives. Minsan, uh, magtatanong din si investor, uh, ano ba yung mga local community dito na pwede namin mabigyan ng trabaho, makatulong sa aming mga proyekto, di ba? So, yun po. Has business-related experience in sales, marketing, advertising, banking, loans, and others po. Siyempre, uh, magpapa, pwede magpatulong si investor sa bank, uh, in case na gusto nila magdagdag ng funds, saan sila pwede makautan na banko, uh, or saan sila pwede magpatransfer ng banko, pang halimbawa galing investor sa ibang bansa. So, yun po. So, dapat si Lady po din ay maboka Magaling sa sales kasi uh, you want to encourage these investors to put up their business in your locality. So, ano ba yung mga dapat mong sabihin para ma-market mo siya? Talagang makonvince mo si investor na mag-invest doon sa lugar niyo po. Then, proficient in financial management and analysis. Siyempre, uh, 
lalo na sa mga PPP, magsasamit sila ng mga project proposal, o dapat agis ka pa paano sila di ko naintindihan nila yung mga financial feasibility study and project proposal na sinasamit ng isang investor. Understand the value and use of computerized systems improvement, ability to develop and evaluate business plan proposal, Effective negotiator and mediator. So, pag pupunta si LCE sa ibang lugar, magkakaroon tayo ng mar ma ma marketing promotion. So, dapat kasama si Leti po kasi at least the negotiation and the mediation process, dapat uh, magaling po si Leti po dyan. Para talagang makonvince niya po yung, yung ating investor, target investor. Good interpersonal and communication skills. Sabi nga, bapat maboka eh. Di ba? So, dapat uh, may personality yung pag uh, yung pag-aayos din niya niya ko din sa kanyang this uh, purpose next so dapat magkaroon siya ng sarili office kasi dati laging si Lady po o Lady po lang po yung nagtatrabaho so as is kayo dapat may makatulong na siya kung magkakapagtayo ng isang unit or office po si LGU next As of him, basic function, serve as a member of the advisory group that will guide the LGU for investment promotion. Kung kailangan uh, dagdagan yung mga kaalaman natin para may patawag ni LCE, yung isang lay po, at least uh, alam po ng office yun, function po nila yun. Advocate and promote policies and practices that will encourage local investment investment. So, ibig sabihin, mga parapernalya, mga flowers, brochures ng isang LGU, dapat uh, manggagaling po lahat kay Lady po. Lady po yun, or sa Lady office. I steer the creation of a business and enabling environment to attract, retain, and expand investment. So, pag may isang investor or isang local business na umalis sa isang LGU, dapat uh, tulungan ni Lady po na huwag pumalis, di ba? Kasi, Sayang din yung ibabayad niyang business tax kung aalis po siya doon sa lugar niyo. Yan. So, kumbaga, uh, you will provide the needs of the business sector. Kasi lalo na sa Business Friendly LGU Award, ang naging endorse po doon yung mga local chamber. Ang pag lang local chamber, eh, hindi kayo endorse, ibig sabihin, walang rapport kayo with your local chamber po. So, kasi kailangan natin alagaan yung mga business sector within our LGU. In close coordination with the local planning development coordinator, you can identify the revenue generating enterprise development projects of the LGU. Uh, the office also provides support and facilitation assistance for prospective and new investors. Establish and maintain a local economic database containing relevant facts and figures on the local economy. Next. So, yun po yung ating ready po na May, yun lang yun, May. Sorry, ha. May? Um, wait, ma'am. I-flash ko po ulit na fast forward sa last slide po eh. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, ito na po yung next slide. Okay. For our number seven functions of the LEDIP office or unit, conduct mission trips in relation to promotion and market activities for the LGU to attract investment. So, if you want to engage more investors in your locality, you can conduct uh, yung mga, mga teleconferencing with other with other countries po. Uh, you can ask help for assistance from BOI kung saan bansa po pwede mag karoon ng investors, di ba? So, depende po yun sa investment priority areas ng local government units. So, you can conduct a mission trips, pwede kayo mag-exchange sa isang uh, isang ibang LGU, sa ibang bansa, mga ganun po. Siyempre, uh, mahirap lang din sa kung sa Pilipinas lang kayo kukuha ng mga investors. So, you can go out uh, to other countries po. 
assist and support local uh, local councils undertake a related to economic development so the the office can help the local development council pagdating po sa economic sector ng ating uh, plans assist in the promotion and development of MSMEs in the locality as well as all other potential investors establish and maintain partnership with regional NEDA, PPP, DPI, BOI, uh, the National Competitiveness Commission under B DTI, Department of Finance, VR. Kasi yung mga investor po magtatanong yan, ano ba yung current uh, cost of water sa LGU? Ano yung current cost of electricity sa LGU? Saan kumukuha ng water sa LGU? Saan sila kano ng ilaw? So mga electric cooperative, mga cooperative sa inyong lugar. So dapat pa may strong rapport po tayo dyan. Para at least yung mga information na tatanong sa atin ng investor, uh, the office is ready to give information po. You can also represent the province, city, municipal in other trade or investment meeting, conferences, in other activities similar in both domestic and foreign venues. Prepare and disseminate investment promotion collaterals, brochures, a website of the LGU for the purpose of information and dissemination. As I said nga po, uh, pag gusto kayo ma mapunta ng investor, ang unang lang titinan po yung ating website. So, syempre kung kukunti information nilalagay nyo, paano kayo makilala ng investor po? So, uh, Meron pong isang LGU nag-share ng kanyang information sa kanyang website. Tapos ang tininan ko ang mga ano yung mga investable area, yung total available area pa sa lugar, paano manufacturing company po yung gusto mag-invest sa sa LGU. And then nung mag-ano siya sa website ng LGU, ay nakita niya meron pa lang ganito a certain uh, lot of malaking uh, available lots pa. So, naging interested po yung investor. Yung pala, kamukat-mukat, hindi pala lahat. Sa LGU pala yun, yung pala personal na pag-aari ng mayor na ilagay pa yung information which is hindi naman binibenta ng mayor pero nailagay sa website sa information. Eh, nagkataon, naging interesado po yung investor doon. So, uh, we should to it na lahat ng ilalagay natin yung information sa ating website ay eh, talagang kumpos ng LGU. Kumbaga, uh, tunay at uh, uh, umbaga tunay ang mga information na uh, lalagay po natin doon. So, even the, the office will also prepare the mga brochures regarding sa local government units po. Next. So, yung office to be headed by the lady po or unit, kung gusto nyo unit lang at masyadong malaking budget for this and supported by minimum of two to three technical support staff to be designated by the local chief executive. So, yung nakalagay po dito, minimum lang if the LGs want to expand your composition of the leadership office or unit, you may do so po. So, depende na po yun sa uh, kung ng LG kung gusto nyo mag-expand pa ng mga tao. Next. So the yung office po unit uh, lalo na pag DB pag office yan kailangan may at least may tatlo kayong division which is the economic enterprise division the business development division and the investment services division So the uh, the functions of the economic enterprise division are responsible for the formulation of plans development and implementation of proposal for the establishment of new economic enterprise. So, kayo po yung gagawa ng mga project proposal, feasibility study, maganda din po magkano kayo ng mga technical working group. Ayan, sino ba pagdating sa infra, pagdating sa financial, sino yung gagawa. At least, si, si Lady po, or the office, siya, siya yung bubuo ng isang proposal. Maganda po kasi dapat ready ang LGU po pagdating sa feasibility feasibility study or project proposal. Kasi pag nag-market po ng, ng BOI ng investor, tapos ibabagsak niya sa LGU, yun, dapat may proposal kayo na mababasa ng isang investor po. So, 
formulation of plans, pwedeng uh, business plan. So, dapat may LGU din, may business plan din po dapat ginagawa ang LGU para mas uh, alam po nila kung how you're going to do uh, to do your investment priority areas para makuha nyo po yung mga target investor natin. So, also na sa Economic Enterprise Division Function din po yung PPP. So, uh, at least dapat well enhanced po sa mga uh, different modalities on PPP. Next. So, pati yung mga joint venture, sa inyo din yung, ibubuin nyo yung joint venture selection committee, ibubuin nyo din yung contract, contract monitoring unit, and po, uh, kung gusto nyo ng mga joint venture. Also, uh, responsible for coordinating with the PPP Center of the Philippines, the main coordination for the PPP. So, if you like to do PPP, you can engage with the PPP Center po para masubay ba yung for your journey nyo sa public-private partnership. They will provide you guidance po. Next. x -my. My. Okay. So, meron tayong LGU P4 Porta. So, the, the vision or the lady po din po ang uh, mag-update ng data do sa ating LGU P4 Porta. So, basta lahat ng PPP project engagement, uh, the economic enterprise division is the fun uh, function po nila to. Next slide. May? For the business development division, uh, is responsible the for supervision of trade and industry function. So, kanina po, na-define na po sa inyo kung ano ba yung trade, ano ba yung investment promotion. So, yan. Coordinate with small medium enterprise or the development council committee in your LGU. Uh, sila din po yung magkakandakt ng research and coordination with the other national government agencies for entrepreneurs for local product standardization. So, yung ating project na si Sibol, yung mga matitrain natin sila, hindi naman sila lahat makakapasok, eh, sila sa prospective entrepreneurs sa inyong lugar po. So, kung gusto nila mag-business, so yan, uh, you have to establish rapport with them po. Conduct or participate on trade and exhibition or other events. Promote local trades by conducting participating on uh, product or business matching activities the national government agency. Next. May? Ma'am, next slide na po ito. Oo, oh, oh, next na. And also, the business development division will monitor and analyze its report of the trade fairs, responsible for the formulation of projects for product development, provide assistance in the conduct of research on funding possibilities from existing and new partners or donors, conduct research and development of new trends of investment pro promotion para panalia, monitor and recommend appropriate interventions for sustainability of each industry. Next. Uh, also, uh, the other division, the ISD or the Investment Services Division, will do the evaluation application for registration and applicant for employment of local incentives. Yeah. And kung magbibigay kayo incentives sa mga business sector po, so yan po, the division ang in charge po. Provide assistance clients in identifying business or joint venture partners, sourcing skilled manpower and services providers, Facilitating concerns encountered by investors and conduct research on the possible investment areas. So, siyempre yung mga local businessmen natin, nakaka-encounter din po sila ng problem kung pwedeng ma-assist din ang lady po. Under function din po nila yon. And yan, kung halimbawa, ano ba yung pag may napuntang uh, investor dyan, gusto makipag-public-private partnership, dapat alam po ng office na to, ng investment services division, ano ba yung mga possible uh, uh, PPP dito sa, sa inyong locality. 
monitor and evaluate project implementation of registered enterprises as well as new investment within the locality. Formulate plans and strategies on strengthening networking relationships, prepare and disseminate investment promotion collaterals, including briefing to investors. So yan, sabi nga natin, pag halimbawa may investor na pumunta sa lugar, dapat we will, we will treat them as a parang red carpet. So uh, pagdating sa mga preparation for the visiting of the investor, the investment services division will be in charge for. Provide adequate recommendation as existing legislation and procedures for local investment. So, dapat uh, yung mga parapernalya natin, mga process or brochures, kung may dumating na investor, ika-guide natin sila. Uh, ano ba yung umpisa nilang steps? Di ba? Magtatayo ng office yan. Anong dapat nilang gawin? Mga sambag yung possible area na pwede nilang pagtayo ng business. Sambag pwede nilang ilagay yung kanilang office. So, yung mga ganong information, kailang alam po ng isang office po yun. So, in charge po si Investment Services Division doon. And yun nga yung provide assistance, develop marketing, public relations, and promotional and advertising plans. Next. So, analyze the investment incentive application, prepare financial statement investment briefing reports, and assist investor investment-related concerns. Yung ating mga, if we provide natin mga fiscal incentives po, uh, with, uh, with the implementing rules and regulations of the CREATE law, uh, within, uh, iba po kasi nagbibigay ng 5 years income tax holiday. Pero with that, uh, kaitlo po, uh, 1 year lang. Pero ibibigay natin income tax holiday uh, for the new investor lang yon Hindi po taon-taon natin siya nabibigyan. Pag binigyan natin siya sa taon-taon, baka malugi naman si LGU. Pero depende rin po sa inyong investment promotion strategy kung paano niyo po gagawin. Kasi, uh, Ang liik naman po ang local investment incentive po, uh, siyempre pag napasa na yan sa higher sangguniyan, which is deem approved na yun, di ba? So batas na po siya. So but uh, pag ipapareview mo yung liik sa BLGF, talagang ayon nila yung 5 years or 8 years income tax holiday. But still, may LGUs po yung nagbibigay ng kanon kasi it will depend nga sa LGUs para makuha nila yung mga uh, kanilang mga partners uh, Ma investor na to. So, yun po. But there's still other incentives na pwede natin ibigay bukod, bukod sa financial po. Bukod sa fiscal incentive. So, uh, the Investment Services Division will determine kung ano ba yung mga dapat na incentive na pwede natin ibigay sa ating investor. Next. So, the technical competencies for a lady po is, yun nga, dapat may ability siya to develop and analyze business plans, project proposals, dapat meron siyang analytical skills, may effective negotiation and mediation skills siya. Sabi nga natin, dapat uh, magaling siya makipag-negotiate. Dapat laging win-win solution. Hindi dapat aggrabiado lagi si, si LGU. Kahit gusto, gusto mo yung investor, dapat that investor will ensure na magkakaroon ng economic growth sa ating uh, locality. So, dapat may good interpersonal communication skills, mga business-related competencies like sales, marketing, advertising, dapat alam po ng isang lady po yan. Ability to link uh, local economic development to the attainment of the LGU special. So, mabigat po ang isang competency ng isang lady po. Next. So, qualify Qualification requirements must be a bachelor's degree kasi parang equivalent of department head po ito. At least with two years experience in business development, tourism, investment promotion, or other related field, at least maintaining po siya na minimum of 40 hours at civil service professional or any other second level eligibility po. So, yun. Uh, yung mga support staff naman niya may Eh, Siyempre, kung anong meron si Lady po, dapat ganun din yung support staff. Pero at, uh, at least meron lang siyang good technical writing skills, computer skills. Kasi pag yung, dapat updated tayo sa mga latest trend on sa mga apps, di ba? So, na magagamit natin for pag, paggawa natin ating mga flyers, brochure, yung mga, mga pwede natin pakita, visual aids na pwede natin ibigay sa ating mga investor. Yeah. So, ganun din po yung staff. 
Next. So, at least bachelor's degree, uh, experience in naman niya at least a, a related uh, training in investment promotion, marketing, business planning, and economics. Tapos, eligible, eligibility din po siya. At least civil service. Yun po. So, uh, syempre, pag ang isang office to magkaroon ng function, kailangan po natin ng financial support from the LGU. So, kailangan, kasi yun po yung reklamo ni ng mga lay, lay po ngayon na hindi sila sinusuporta ng LGU, hindi sila binibigyan ng budget. Next. So, the, the ILG will monitor, will monitor po kung nakapag-create na kayo ng office or may unit na kayo or may lay po na po kayo. Dali, di po po. So, yun po. So, we will do the monitoring po. And because, ah, uh, Ang isa pa project po ng DILG is to yung i-develop po talaga yung lady po as a uh, as the lead uh one of the lead uh uh kumbaga lead leader po dati sa LG. So we are developing modules to enhance the capacity and capability of local government of the lady po particularly. So thank you po. So hopefully our uh, with this mandanas, ma include mo niyo po sa development transition plan niyo ang establishment ng isang office po at with a permanent position given to isang lady po. Sana hindi na sila maging dual personality. Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Mom Louie. Yes, tama po no si ano po same sentiments po then with us. Sana po ay uh, maging permanent position na nga po yung ating mga lady po. Alright, so with that po, ayan, knowing po no, na karamihan po pala ng ating participants ay wala pong audio, you may chat po your clarifications or questions uh, sa ating pong uh, session 4. Or kahit po if meron po kayo mga new questions na gusto niyo pong itanong from the previous sessions, uh, you may do so po uh, right now. So ayan, sa ating pong mga participants. Ayun. So meron po tayo ditong um, mga questions lang po no na na naipon and uh, you may still send po no dito po sa ating chat box or i-private message niyo po kami kung uh, medyo ano po shy type po tayo. Pero yan po. We have here uh, Ma'am Louie and for our BLGD colleagues po. Uh, what are the actions undertaken by the DILG? Uh, yun nga po in order to make the lady po a mandatory or permanent position. As we all know, while an MC can encourage a creation of a plantilla position for a lady po, it cannot enforce its mandatory creation. Hence, uh, really, a Republic Act po talaga is needed to this effect. Ayun po, I would refer this to Mom Louie po and the rest po of our BLGD um, counterparts. Uh, yes, and, uh, yun ka. Kaya nga sinasabi namin with the uh, devolution transition plan, Pwede naman po kayo magkaroon ng proposal kasi kung di ba ito na yung time na that we will propose to DBM para mapondohan po yung inyong mga projects di ba. So syempre unahin natin yung mga basic services which is yun naman talagang ilalagay natin doon. Dadagdagan lang natin ng yung ating mga involvement sa ating ser basic services. But after that you can propose, don't, sama nyo na sa, sa transition plan na ilagay nyo na po ito. Actually, uh, may coordination kami with DPM. So, uh, with this MC, tinanong po sa amin and also with uh, civil service, sila nila mag-usap po mag doon kung paano ito magkakaroon ng permanent position sa isang local government units, hence for the devolution. Kaya nga, nilagay namin to sa Mandanas Supreme Court tooling para at least, uh, yun, magbigyan nyo ng, kasi kayo naman pong gagawa ng DTP nyo, di ba? So, if you want really to have a plantilla position for the lady po, ipush na natin siya sa ating DTP. Yun, na, 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 makreate na po talaga siya. At um, isa pa po, uh, there are two congressmen na po talagang may proposal na po talaga ng lady po uh, to be to be one sa Congress. May Republic Act na. Uh, uh, Repub Basta may proposed house bill pala. Proposed house bill po. So yun po. Pero siyempre, uh, hindi pa lang po ito napupush kasi nagkaroon pa ng pandemic, mag-election pa po. So, isang congressman from Region 4A, from Calabarzon, from Cavite, uh, nagpupush, saka isa pa po sa Region 6 na congresswoman po. Thank you.
Ayun. Thank you rin po, Ma'am Louie. Ayun po, no, at least uh, we're glad to know na may uh, hopefully po ay mas ma-emphasize nga po yung need for this. And sana po ma-push po yung uh, bill po na iyon. Alright, so no further questions din daw po from LG Rojas Palawan. And let, checking lang po, baka po may mga naka, ano po, no, naka-view sa ating YouTube. Alright, no questions din po. Okay, everyone, are we sure po ba we're uh, good po with uh, the discussion so far? How about po from Calapan City and from province from province of Palawan po? Okay, sige po. Ayan, hearing and seeing none po, no? Uh, yun nga po, pwede po naman po natin uh, i-address later lahat if meron na po tayong maisip po na questions or may mga insights na po tayong uh, gustong i-share. Alright, so no questions din po from PLGU Palawan. Salamat po. Okay, so with that po, no? maraming maraming salamat po, Ma'am Louie, and uh, for providing nga po yung uh, update din po na yun. I'm sure uh, the lady po on board po no, sa ating session uh, is glad to hear nga po yung ating actions. And uh, moving on na po sa ating pong uh, next session is uh, we're uh, delving in naman po sa ating fifth session. Ito ay ang Understanding the Local Investments and Incentives Code and uh, yung basic principles po ng IRR for formulation for this. So uh, yun po, calling po again our uh, colleagues from the DILGBLGD, uh, the floor is yours po for our fifth session. Hello everyone. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon okay, po ma'am. So, yes po. Okay. Um, thank you everyone. Uh, kanina pa po akong nakajoin and I've seen how interactive yung mga participant din natin this afternoon. So my will be sharing um, my screen and I will be talking about the the local investments and incentive codes o yung tinatawag po nating um liig um, originally um noong during the trainers of training this was presented by uh, Ms. Luna Gracia Panesa Amad so and um they are we are very fortunate because they are very willing to share with us their um resources their um presentations para magkaroon po tayo ng transfer of knowledge. So, basically po, kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan, di ba, na kailangan meron tayong um, local investments and incentives co in incentive code. So, alam ko po na hindi po ito bago sa ating mga LGUs because marami na sa atin ang meron ito. Um, sa, yung iba po, kailangan lang i-update pero alam ko ito ay matagal nang sinimulan sa iba't ibang LGU sa, um, sa bansa. So we will be for others this will be a review or pwede rin pong ang presentation ko ay maging um, reference ninyo if you have um, if you have current local investment and incentive codes or yung di i-check po natin kung ang mga content ba nito ay um, in line dito sa aking mga i-discuss or kung may mga kulang I hope this will um, help para mas maka magkaroon tayo ng sound na liik okay next slide po Okay, so we have, of course, the legal basis of the LIIC. So this meaning, hindi po ito basta inisip lamang, kundi merong mga policies na na-issue before na naging basis bakit nga ba um, may LIIC or paano nga ba i-formulate yung LIIC. We have the DILGMC 2010-113, um, dated October 13, 2010. So ito po yung designation of play po nakaka-discuss din lang ni Miss Louie kanina. We also have the DILGDTI JMC 2011-01 or yung formulation of LIIC. Um nitong ang last just last year we issued 2020-167 DILGMC um uh, that contains the guidelines in promoting economic development and investment promotions and establishment of LEDIP office unit in all LGU. So ito pong um, particularly na DILGMC na ito ay um, yung presentation, uh, bago po ang presentation na ito na diniscuss po ni Ms. Louie. So next po. 
ay um, of course yung 1987 Constitution of the Republic of of the Philippines or yung um, nag, uh, nag-discuss or yung state about local autonomy. We also have, of course, the Local Government Code or the LGC of 1991, um, particularly Section 109, yung functions of the Local Development Councils to formulate local investment incentives to promote in inflow of investment capital. We also have the... Um, general welfare of the people, of, to balance ecology, peace, employment, health, morals, justice, and convenient of inhabitants. And chapter 5 ng section 192, which is the authority to grant tax exemption. So ito po, um, kagaya po nung question kanina, di ba, sinabi na, Yung JMC, though may power siya to enjoin LGU or to give guidelines, um, kailangan pa rin nating i-push ng magkaroon na ng batas para magkaroon ng um, permanent position ng ating mga LEDIP or um, yung dati nating pinatawag na LEPO. So good news po si um, Cavite Congressman Luis A. Ferrer de Fort ay meron na pong um, sinulat na House Bill. Ito yung House Bill 392 or yung institution, institutionalizing the position of the Economic and Investment Promotion Officer in the LGU amending RA 7160 or the LGC of 1991. So dito po, um, nilalaman ng House Bill or pinupush natin na magkaroon na ng permanent position talaga ang ating uh, mga LEDIP dahil alam natin na um, Sobrang importante ng kanilang role at kapag sila ay nakakapacitate natin, gusto natin na maging permanente na yung tao dahil nagkakahamper din nung um, pag, pag, um, pag um, capacitate natin para uh, kung, di ba, kung ngayon ipakapacitate natin tapos papalitan na naman next year. So ito po ay base rin sa mga um, comments or sa mga hinaing na aming napakinggan doon sa syempre sa ating pakikipagtalakayan or sa ating discussion with the local government unit. So next po. So um, okay, dito po ay ang makikita natin kung ano nga ba ang dapat nilalaman ng LEE. So the Local Investments and Incentive Codes otherwise known as LEE. So ano nga ba ito? Ito po, um, it contains the LGU's number one, sound investment policy. So meaning, lahat po ng polisiya, roles, uh, or rules pa tungkol sa mga investment ay dito dapat nakasulat. So dito po ay um, in-emphasize na dapat ito ay sound. So sound meaning, kailangan um, relevant talaga siya or may basihan. Um, meron siyang na ang, ang kanyang aim ay talagang makatulong para mas mapalakas ang investment or mas mapaganda ang investment climate sa ating mga local government units. It also um, contains the investment priority areas or the IPAs. Importante po ito kasi alam natin na iba't ibang LGUs, may iba-iba po tayong um, resources, may iba-iba rin tayong skills, may iba-iba tayong um, um, kung ano-anong um, kailang, na pwede nating magamit para sa pagpapaunlad ng ating mga investment. So meaning, KLGU, for example, sa KLGU 1, kung um, investment priority niya ang tourism dahil marami siyang magagandang um, lugar na pwede na pwedeng i-open for tourism development, pwede hindi siya maging investment priority area ni LGU2. Bakit? Kasi may iba siyang uh, strength or may iba siyang um, resource. So, importante po ito kasi na, i- na iintindihan ni LGU kung saan siya pwedeng mag-succeed kung ano yung, ano yung mga um, investment priority areas na pwede niyang gamitin para mas mapaganda yung mas madaming investors ang pumasok. So minsan de ba lagi natin sinasabi na halimbawa sa LGU, hindi wag mong ipo-push na sa tourism ka kung uh, hindi naman talaga doon yung iyong strength or yung iyong resources. So um, let us develop our strength or our resource na pwede nating magamit for investors or for investment um, improvement. 
So, ang next po, yung pangatlo, laman din ni Liik ay yung incentives to investors. So, kung ako si investors, um, pwede kong maging um, reference si Liik. Ano nga ba yung aking mga pwedeng makuha or mga incentives ko kapag nag-invest ako sa LGU na ito. This is very crucial and very important because we want our LGUs to be um, investors friendly, di ba? Yung investment climate dapat maganda. And one of um, the ways of improving the, incent uh, the investor investment climate in an LGU is to provide incentives. So alam natin, di ba, mayroong um, fiscal or non-fiscal incentives din na pwede nating ibigay. So next po. Okay, so ano nga ba ang um, objective ng LIIC? Why do we have uh, to have LIIC? Bakit kailangan ito? Number one, harmonization of investment policies sa so national and local. So again, syempre gusto natin i-emphasize na yung mga nilalaman ng LIIC dapat harmonize siya on the policies from the national level. So, hindi sila pwedeng uh, magkasalungat. So, ang mga investment po, investment policies on the national level should be um, our basis on it and reference and we should consider it in crafting our DE. Number two, consistency and transparency of local investment policies. So, syempre, kung may liik, doon po, nandun po written ang ating um, investment policies and uh, sa local level. Meaning, merong references yung mga tao, whether um, ako ay isang investor or ako ay from the general public, from a particular LGU, meron akong reference na pwedeng tingnan kung ano-ano nga bang mga investment policies ng isang LGU. And it is in writing. Okay, so transparent po siya. And then, investment promotion marketing tool. So, syempre, ang LIE kay isang magandang marketing tool kasi kagaya nga po ng sinabi dun sa previous slide, it should be um, something na nagsasabi kung ano yung mga investment um, incentives. So as an investor for example, pwede kong maging pwede or kung kayo po ay isang ledip at may nag-inquire na isang investor, pwede niyo magamit yung LIIC para i-market ang inyong LGU. So um pwede nating sabihin na magandang mag-invest sa certain LGU because we provide investment para sa mga investors or investment incentives. And then effective and efficient IPC services. So again, ito pong liig ay pwedeng maging um, reference ng IPC para sa pagpuprovide ng service. And of course, seal of good local housekeeping and good governance. Ito po ay isa sa mga pwede, na, pwede nating um, magamit or pwedeng um, require or requirement to ng seal of house good at seal of good housekeeping and good governance. Ito pong liig, pagkakaroon ng liig. Next po. Okay, so the framework of the LIIC, ano-ano po yung um, nilalaman ng LIIC o ano nga ba ang itsura ng LIIC? So ito po, meron po tayong iba't ibang part, hang, 10 parts po, yung title, yung declaration of policy, yung definition of term, yung local investment and incentive board, so sino-sino yung um, ang ating nasa incentive boards. And yung IPC natin, or Investment Promotion Center, we also have, ito yung IPAs, yung Investment Priority Area. So dito po nakasulat yung mga kung anong investment or um, saan field tayo um, ang priority natin na i-improve sa ating LGU. The registration, the incentives, which is... Um, nakakategorize po siya sa fiscal and non-fiscal and appropri appropriation and final provision. Okay, next po. So, so investment policy of LGUs, it must be clear, consistent with LGU vision, mission, and align with the national and regional trust. CDP, CLUP, and zoning regulation and ordinances. So marami po tayong plano like yung CDP, CLUP, at yung iba pang mga references natin sa LGU. So ito po ay dapat consistent with our LIIC. So si LIIC, kailangan manging reference niya yung si CDP. So meaning, halimbawa po meron tayong plano like urban plan or 
um, kung saan itatayo yung mga certain investments. So kahit um, yung mga priority areas po natin ay kailangan ay nakaangkla pa rin kung ano ang nakasulat doon sa CL, CDP or CLUP. And incentive should be fair, time-bound, and consistent with laws, rules, and regulations. So again, should be time-bound din po. Importante po yun. So yung incentive, hindi po siya pwedeng halimbawa habang habang buhay na na may incentive kundi kailangan meron tayong in-state na gaano ba katagal yung incentive para i-enjoy ng ating mga local um local investors also industry industry business should enhance positive effect on the environment encourage use of indigenous materials local labor fair treatment of employees contractors service providers promote safe and healthy working condition among others. So this one, ito po yung part na to, hindi na nakikita natin na ang um, LIIC ay or yung part na may investment policy of the LGU, hindi lamang siya concerned na magkaroon tayo ng maraming investor. Pero kung ikinoconsider din niya yung ibang mga effects nito. So hindi ibig sabihin na maraming investors ay um, maganda na ang effect sa ating LGU kasi meron tayong um, kailangan pang ibang consider katulad nga po ng effect nito sa environment or ini-encourage nito yung um, um, use of indigenous materials. Of course, local labor. So meaning kung may mga investor, encourage natin na within the locality lang ang kukuha nila na labor force kasi ito ay makakapag-provide ng trabaho para po sa mga tao or para sa constituents. So, again, um, gusto po namin i-emphasize na hindi because uh, maraming investors ay okay na. Kundi i-consider din natin yung ibang mga part or yung mga ibang uh, maa-apektuhan nito. Katulad ng treatment of employees, ganyan, service providers, tapos yung say, um, working condition, safe and healthy ba. So, sa pamamaraan po nito, hindi lang natin um, concern yung pagpapadami ng investor, kundi pangalagaan din yung kapakanan ng ating mga mamamayan. Next po. Okay, so ano naman po yung nilalaman ng Local Investment and Incentive Board? So, syempre nakalagay dito kung sino yung chairman. So, ang ating chairman ay si Local Chief Executive sa sa um, konteksto po ng ating mga cities and municipalities, si Mayor. Um, for Vice Chairman, ito po yung LGU official or pwede rin si private sector. Ang ating uh, mga members ay syempre kasama dito po ang Lady po or Lady um, District Congressman or Representative or pwede rin President ng, barangay, ng League of Barangay and LCEs and Sanggunian Chairperson, Trade and Industry Ways and Means, and Private Sector Representative Business or NGO. So ito po yung mga uh, members ng ating Local Investments and Incentives Board. So kung, kung nakipapansin nyo po, ito po ay iba-ibang, galing sa ibang, ibang sector. Like meron tayong private sector, meron din tayong NGO. Because we want the Local Investment and Incentives Board to be balance para po maraming perspective ang makikita natin. Like kung meron silang um, gagawing polisiya on inv investment promotion, then maraming uh, factors na consider kasi um, meron po tayong mga members from other sectors such as private sector, businesses, or NGO. Next po. Okay. So ganito po yung um, structure of Lo uh, local Economic Development and Investment Promotions Office. Ito po ay na-discuss na ni, ni Ms. Louie kanina kung mapapansin nyo po doon sa DILGMC 2021-67. So meron tayong um, si Mayor or si Local Chief Executive, then si LEDIP Office. Ang sa ilalim po ng LEDIP, LEDIP Office ay ito po yung iba't ibang mga division. So again, hindi po um, kasi merong mga LGUs na um, pwede na silang mag-expand or pwede na nilang magkaroon ng tatlong divisions under LEDIC office. So ito po yung aming um, ginawang reference or pwede pong maging reference ng mga LGU. So we have the Economic Enterprise, 
Business Development and Investment Services. So, bawat division po ay may iba-ibang function based on the discussion din kanina. Next po. Okay, so this is the Investment Promotion Center function. So, number one, image building or develop or improve areas image. So this one, it provides an enabling business-friendly environment with the streamlined procedures and processes. So yung um, isa po nito ay pagbibuild nga ng image. So ito po ay more on marketing. Paano nga ba um, tinitingnan ni isang investor pag sinabi ang certain LGUs na ito? Anong tingin niya doon? Business-friendly ba yon Or mahirap ba ang mga proseso? Siyempre, in order for us to develop or um, improve our area's image, meron po tayong mga specific steps na kailangan gawin. Number one ay itong sinabi dito na um, streamlined pro procedures and processes. So si DILG din po, marami na po kaming inisyo ng mga JMC, uh, MC on streamlining procedures and processes. Di ba po, um, kung mapapansin nyo ay sunod-sunod ang aming mga references na ini-issue para um, magkaroon ng guidelines ang LGU para ma-streamline ang business permit, ang building permit na uh, nagkaroon din tayo ng integration, um, MC on integration of barangay clearance. We also have yung pag um, sa fees and charges kung paano natin magkakaroon ng um, reasonable fees and charges charges ang ating mga LGU and we have um, streamlining or meron din tayong um, repeal and we also have re-engineering. So, napaka-dami pong references na ini-issue para po at ito po ay para ma-streamline yung procedures and processes. Kasi alam natin na kapag streamline or mabilis ang pagproseso sa mga uh, ating mga local government units, then ito po ay nakakaganda ng image. Di ba? Pag naka, halimbawa si investor, maganda yung naging experience niya on um, applying for a business permit on or applying for the building permit. And then it helps us to develop or to improve our um, LGU's image. Also, to develop update content of website, collateral taglines, project location profiles, RFOs, cost of doing business. So again, ito pong yung sa, um, we always encourage the LGU or we always enjoy the LGUs to develop and update the website. Kasi especially po ngayong time ng pandemic, di ba? Maraming mga investors ang nagre-rely na lang sa internet upang uh, makita po nila kung ano yung mga references or pag nagre-research sila on, on certain LGU. So, if you if your um website LG website yeah, is updated then it would be um easier for the investor to um access the information they their need um they need and <laughs> mas uh ma hindi lang din po sa investors kundi pati din yung general public na kailangan or na naghahanap ng information about a certain LGU and of course to strengthen networking partnership with stakeholders. So yung dahil po sa um, function po ng IPC na, di ba nakita natin kanina na mer meron tayong uh, members from different sectors because we want to strengthen networking and partnership and we also acknowledge that even though this one is an initiative by local government units but we also have, we have to involve um, different stakeholders to get their perspectives and cooperation. So, mas marami pong nagtatrabaho or mas maraming perspective ang ating nakikita about this, then it would be more efficient and effective. For um, investment generation, we encourage foreign and domestic investment. So again, kanina um, palagi natin sinasabi, di ba, na ang lead naman talaga, isa sa function niya ay makaroon ng maraming investors or makapag magkaroon, ma-improve niya yung investment climate. Nang sa ganun, mas marami pong investor yung pumasok. So paano nga ba ito gagawin? So number one is to conduct investment briefings or investment generation mix activities. So this is more on information dissemination. So even though we have um, investment um, generation, for example, or mga plants, then kung hindi natin ito is a share through 
our um, activities, then it would be pointless. And then collate updated investment data figures for information of investor. So, um, importante po ito kasi kung si investor, for example, ay nag, um, nagtanong or nag-inquire about certain um, information, then we could provide the updated one. Kasi di ba, before investing something, maraming mga kailangan i-consider si investor, ilad ba yung population, so marami na bang certain um, business establishment and such. And kapag po nagtanong si, si investor on that, we should uh, have the updated data or figures. And then process, evaluate, recommend application for registration. Um, and then conduct targeted company visits with well-researched data needed by company. So ito po yung um, pang dalawang class ay nakita natin. Ito ay as it, uh, uh, it um, show yung ating support ng yung ating pag-assist um, on investors. So kung ano man po ang mga kailangan nila, for example, sa registration and also sa mga research data um, and um, sa mga kailangan nilang i-visit, then we should be able to provide them the needed assistance. And okay, for the last one, for investor servicing. It provides services to invest existing or potential investors. So, kung makita po natin yung services na in-offer in natin, it should not be just for the existing one or kung or, or doon lang sa mga potential. So, kung um, for example, na-close na natin yung deal or nakapag-invest na si investor sa ating LGU, hindi po natatapos doon ang ating ser service. Kundi um, after niyang mag-invest, yung mga kailangan pa rin niya or mga kailangan transaction, kailangan ay uh, madali pa rin po at uh, kung hanggat kaya ay mapoprovide ni IPC or ni Investment Promotion Center. So, isa po dito ang um, facilitate business entry through um, one-stop shop or IPC contact details hotline are reachable. So, licenses and permit, identify joint venture, partners, RFO, location, project profiles, raw materials and supplier, labor force, um, service, utility provider, and site visit, among others. So, ito po yung mga kailangan nilang data, di ba? So, um, sabi dito yung details, pati yung hotline ay kailangan reachable. So, hindi tayo, di ba? Minsan may mga contact number tayo na binibigay. For example, I'm the potential investor. I go to the website and I search for the contact number of a certain lady. Pero... Um, when I dial it, hindi naman po siya reachable. So, we will miss the opportunity pag po ganun. So, it should be always update, updated and um, pati po yung mga data na kailangan nila. And then, render after care services. Entails monitoring, periodic contract with investor, troubleshooting of issues and concern, anticipate future needs of investors. So, again, ito po ay um, pinapakita nito na ang ating service ay hindi nag, nagtatapos when the investors invest. Pero um, even after that, um, we have, uh, we can provide assistance on monitoring or yung mga pag-troubleshoot um, po ng mga issues and concern na kanilang um, kakaharapin. Next po. Okay, for, an, for um, investment priority areas naman or yung IPAs, um, ano nga ba yung kailangan natin i-consider when we are um, crafting this one? So, number one, aligned with BOI Investment Priorities Plan until the Strategic Investment Priority Plan is approved. Also, it should be specific industry or sector. So, kung tourism, tourism, kung um, um, say fishing, ganun. yung mga uh, kung ano pong industry or sector kailangan specific. And competitive advantage. So, competitive advantage meaning yung ating um, priority ay naaayon kung ano ang meron tayo or sa strength kung ano ang resources na meron tayo. And consider the raw materials and labor force. So, again, ang, ang gusto nating maging effect po ng uh, pagkakaroon ng maraming investors ay 
pagkakaroon din ng trabaho ng mga mamamayan within the locality. And of course, para din ma magamit yung mga raw materials na available. So, kung meron namang raw materials na available na pwedeng magamit ng investors, then we should um, promote it and um, hindi yung uh, mag-i-import pa or kukuha pa sa ibang lugar. Kung meron naman pong available within the locality. Next po. Okay, for the gen general policies on incentives. Number one, fiscal incentives must be time-bound. So again, meron po tayong time na ini-indicate. As much as possible, wag pong mag exceed sa one year from actual date of start of operation. And um, given to new investment projects. So, um, ang ang investment po ay para maka-attract ng bagong investors, di ba po? So, ang mga incentive ay dapat um, ibibigay sa mga new investments or projects. And then, no to regulatory or service fees such as garbage, sanitary, electrical, health fees, public utilities, or toll fees, etc. So, yung mga investment po na ibibigay natin ay hindi dapat pagtatanggal ng mga necessary fees. Bakit? Kasi ito pong mga fees na ito ay binabayaran para sa servisyo na ibinibigay. So, uh, hanggat maaari po, hindi po ito dapat tinatanggal. And fiscal incentives are only allowed as under Book 2 of RA 716-60 or the LG, LCG of 1991. And no double availment of incentives. So, isang beses lang po siya. And more of non-fiscal incentives. So, mas in-encourage natin na magkaroon ng non-fiscal incentives. So, because we want, though we want more investors, we want um, to give them incentive po, di ba? Pero, uh, we also make sure da hindi naman po tayo malulugi um, sa pagbibigay ng sobrang incentives para sa ating mga investors. Next po. Okay, for non-fiscal incentives. So, ano-ano nga ba, di ba, sabi natin doon sa, uh, na, sa slide kanina. Kesa magbigay ka ng fiscal, ay mag, uh, pwede tayong mas mag-provide ng non-fiscal incentives. So, what are the examples of non-fiscal incentives? So, for example, number one, facilitate BPLS or registration procedures. Ito napaka-laking um, um, ginhawa or... Uh, ma, ma, isang isang example na makakabawas ng burden ng ating mga ng ating mga um, investors when we offer to facilitate business permit licensing system na tayo na lang so this is a non fiscal incentive pero sobrang attractive siya para sa ating mga investors also we can offer assistance in resolving issues and concerns with ngas NGOs, employees, and other service providers. We could also coordinate or facilitate inbound or outbound mission, virtual or face-to-face. -face. And we could also provide updated database, for example, sa JV partners, projects, locations, and project profiles, yung mga iba't ibang um, database or iba't ibang information that an that, um, investor needs, then we could provide it po. And then, coordinate with LGA such as TESDA for training of manpower skills or labor force. O pwede rin po ito na pag nag-coordinate tayo ng uh, mga trainings from TESDA, then it helps the investor para ma-meet yung skills na kailangan nila, yung uh, training na kailangan din nila. And other aftercare services for investors among others. So, aftercare meaning pagkatapos mag-invest ni investors and may issue siya na or may assistance siya na kailangan, um, we can also offer to provide it as part of our aftercare services. Okay, next po. Okay, for budget appropriation, yung operation po ng um, investment promotion centers, we have promo activities, generation mix, IT services, um, collaterals such as brochure, website, AVPs, project location profiles, and capacity building up to ITC personnel. 
So ito ito po yung iba't ibang um mga activities and um, kung saan natin pwedeng gamitin yung budget ni IPC. And next po. Okay. So I think that's all po. Um, again, we would like to acknowledge that this presentation is from the Board of Investment and uh, I hope that it will help us na mas ma-update at mas ma-provide yung mas sound and relevant liik para sa ating mga local government units. Maraming salamat po. Alright, thank you din po Ma'am Lian. So, bigyan naman po natin uh, si Ma'am Lian and the rest of BLGD po ng isang masigabong palakpakan. So, thank you, thank you po. Alright, so as usual po, no, your, uh, for your questions, you may uh, use po yung ating Zoom chat box or raise your hand po to be acknowledged. So, uh, anyone po, meron po ba tayong um, tanong po uh, sa atin pong um, nakalipas po no, na limang sessions for uh, today po? Or any clarifications or realizations po or manifestations? <laughs> Lahat po ng missions that we want to uh, share po with everyone. So, alright. So, checking po yung ating um, YouTube channel. Wala po tayo so far na questions. Okay po. Baka po uh, we need a 10-minute break po ulit muna no, for everyone to process yung atin pong um, kakatapos lang po na session. And uh, yun po, baka po may mga uh, tanong po kayo after our afternoon break. So, ayan, no question daw po. Sige po, uh, go ahead lang po at uh, baka meron po tayong uh, maisip po na tanong no, after po our 10-minute break. So, alright. So, everyone will be taking, uh, yun nga po, 10 minutes lang po as a health break. So, it's now 2.41 p.m. Ay, yes po, meron, pong, meron po bang nag, uh, ano po, unmute? Anyone? Alright. Okay po, baka ako lang po yung may nakarinig na. <laughs> ano rinig? Ah, sige. Baka po may nakaano lang po, pampagising. May nakapag-accidentally uh, unmute lang po. Okay, everyone. So, it's 2.41 p.m. Uh, let's take a, ano lang po, 10-minute health break. So, let's all be back at uh, 2.52 p.m. Alright po. So, maraming salamat po. Hopefully po ay... Uh, baka po may mga gusto na po kayo erase after ng ating health break. So, salamat po!
So good afternoon po ulit everyone and welcome back to our session. Okay, so uh, before po we proceed to our um, some announcements and yung atin pong um, session, last session for this afternoon, uh, meron lang I, or meron po bang dagdag questions or clarifications from the earlier five sessions po natin from anyone po? Or we're uh, good pa naman po so far? Ayan po, again, as a reminder po ng ating cleaning management team, uh, you may use po yung ating Zoom chat box or pwede po tayo mag-raise hand no, para po ma-acknowledge. And uh, yun lang rin po, um, important lang rin po namin ma-remind yung ating pong um, attendance form to be accomplished by everyone po. I believe po, uh, uh, meron na po mga nag uh, log in po from Calapan City and from province of Palawan. Pero ayun po, no, makikisuyo lang po sana kami from Rojas, Palawan to accomplish po yung ating um, attendance form. So nakasend din po yan sa ating chat box ngayon. So thank you very much po. And at this point po, no, since we have um, enough time po before 4pm, we'll uh, go ahead na po with our next session. And uh, this is to be discussed po ulit by uh, the DILG Bureau of Local Government Development. Uh, Ma'am Louie, good afternoon po. Sige. Uh, ano ko yung fiscal incentive siya, dali lang. Hello po, Ma'am Louie. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, kasi ang better to discuss this is the Bureau of Local Government Finance. Kasi sila po yung, kung magagamit po kayo ang fiscal incentives, this must be the Bureau of Local Government Government Finance. You can inquire for them. Pero i-share ko lang po yung mga presentations. Sandali lang. Okay. Uh, pwede na mag-share, no? Yes po, Ma'am Louie. Go ahead po. Kasi ang, actually, ang nagkaka-problema po kasi sa LIIC, yung kung papayagan ba ng Bureau of Local Government Finance, yun yung mga incent fiscal incentives. Siyempre, maganda rin pong ma-share sa, sa LGU, yung sa ating investor, yung mga fiscal incentives na pwede nating ibigay sa kanila bukusan ng fiscal. Pero the Board of Investment is encouraging the LGUs. Mas maganda sana kung non-fiscal. Kasi, uh, kumbaga, mababawasan din yung earned revenue ng local government units. So yung mga facilitation services, yung mga uh, mga needs ng client, kung ma ano natin, kung makikater natin ng mas maaga, mas mabilis, mas maganda pong ibigay na as incentive yun. So ito, this is from the presentation of Bureau of Local Government Finance. Madali lang Uh, the functions of I think the functions of the Bureau of Local Government Panas is uh, assist in the formulation and implementation of policies on local government revenue administration and fund management. Because, di ba all all we know, uh, the treasurer is the one who's collecting the the revenues of the local government units. Kaya ang mga treasurer under parin po ng BLGF, lalo na pag highly organized city po ata. So the the Bureau of Local Government Finance also is the one in charge on the exercise of administrative and technical supervision and coordination over the treasury and assessment operations of local government. Okay. Then uh, provide consultative services and technical assistance to the local governments and the general public on local taxation real property assessment, and other re related matters. Paska uh, pagdating sa fiscal administration, it, it is the Bureau of Local Government Panayas ang nag-guide po sa LGUs. So what are the type of resources that can LGU mobilize? So you have your ERO or the NATA, na magiging NATA na po. Your share from the national wealth. Uh, alam nyo naman po magkumagano share ng province, ng cities and municipalities. The, the direct share from 
national taxes, grant and aids, borrowings, the public-private partnership for that is intern external. So internal naman, you have the taxes, fees, and charges. Yung mga nilalagay natin for mga permit fees, yung mga, mga fees na nilalagay natin sa pagdating sa collection ng business permit, di ba? Then, uh, charges, income from local enterprise. So, yun yung mga uh, resource mobilization ng local government units. So, dyan po duma, uh, kumbaga dyan po umanda yung income natin, revenue ng, uh, ng isang LGU. So, the taxing powers of the LGUs naman, pagdating sa business, is only for cities and municipalities, for real properties, sand gravel, and other quarry resources. Uh, si Fravi, si cities, pagdating sa municipality, shared lang si Barangay sa kasi municipality. Then, for the idle land and real property transfer, mga printing and publication, delivery vans and trucks, professional and franchises uh, taxes, uh, sa province and cities lang, sa municipalities and barangay, wala po. Then for amusement places, uh, si province cities lang ang meron, ang municipality wala. Dating, pagdating na sa community tax po, si cities lang ang meron, si, sa kasi municipalities and shared lang si barangay. So for, for the province naman po, uh, wala po community tax. So, ito po yung, bakit, uh, so, bakit tayo mag, kailangan magbigay ng fiscal incentives because of Section 447, uh, 458, and 467 under the the authority of Sangguni Ambayan, Panlusod, and Panlalawiga na you can provide grant incentives. Ha? So, kung mga may mga bago mga investor kayong gusto na makuha so ano ba yung mga pwedeng fiscal incentives na pwede natin ibigay so ito po yung ating legal basis kung bakit pwede magbigay si LGU ng fiscal incentives so ganun din po yung section 192 of local government code and article 282 of the local government code yeah. so may basihan Yun nga yun, yung CLGU kasi minsan nalilito sila. Ano ba yung tax exemption sa tax incentives? Kasi uh, um, yung iba sabi natin, tax exemption, ibig sabihin hindi sila magbabayad ng tax pag merong natural calamity, civil disturbance, general failure of crops, or adverse economic condition such as substantial decrease in the price of agriculture or agri-based products. So yun po. Pagdating naman sa tax incentive, shall be granted only to new investment in the locality and the ordinance shall prescribe the terms and conditions therefore. So kasi yun nga, yung sinasabi ko po kanina, may mga LGUs na nagbibigay ng year income tax holiday. Diba? Kasi gusto, gusto nila makuha yung ganong si ganitong investor. So, they will uh, for ano lang uh, income tax holiday. Kahit na kumbaga, hindi siya yung investment sa lugar. So, yun. So, pwede tayo. Basta magbibigay lang tayo ng income tax holiday sa isang investor kung bago lang siya sa ating lugar. Kung gusto nyo. Like, for example, there's a city na uh, a big department store na gusto niyang mga mapunta doon sa kanyang LGU. So, kasi that time, uh, puro local department store lang ang meron sa kanilang lugar. So, but this uh, this one, a, a big uh, company, a big department store, uh, gusto nilang makuha. So, they granted a uh, uh, tax incentive to this uh, para, to this uh, big department store para makuha po nila yun. So, yun po. So, yan. We could give uh, investment. Pag na yung existing, kasi pag nagbigay pa tayo ng investment sa yung mga LGUs, kasi kung halimbawang uh, may local business na sila na nandiyan na, nagbibigay pa sila ng income tax holiday. Ibig sabihin, hindi nagbabayad, na, hindi pinag-ano nila na wag magbayad ng tax. So, marang kinilugin naman po pag hindi ibibigay natin lang sa new investment. Parang ano lang yun, uh, ano man tawag dito, pang panghatak lang natin, added factor lang siya. Kung baga may added value lang, sige, magtayo ka ng business mo dito, bibigyan kita ng income tax holiday. So, yun ganun po. Then, shall apply, yung tax exemption naman, shall apply to all business similarly situated. At ganun din po doon sa tax incentive. Nagbibigay tayo ng mga incentives sa mga uh, investor na gusto natin mapapunta sa atin. 
Then, uh, ito naman, yung grant exemption shall take effect only during the next calendar year. So, ibig sabihin kung this year, so hanggang next year lang po siya, 12 months lang yung tax exemption niya. So, depende po yan sa law. Alagay niyo yan sa local ordinance yun, syempre. In case of shared revenues, uh, yun nga, so kanina, di ba, may mga taxes na mag sa province, may cashier city or municipality na may cashier di si barangay. So, pag ganito mga taxes po na shared revenues, yung exemption na shall relieve only to the extent of LGU granting such exemption of relief. So, yun po. Pero pag sa tax incentive naman, hanggang maaari, one year lang po ang gusto talaga ng BLGF. Pero yung mga eight-year income tax holiday, sabi nga, wala nang... Kung hanggang walang nagre-reklamo, basta ang kinagawa lang po ng BLGF, uh, para sa kanila, one year lang. Pero kung if the LGU na kaya nilang patunayan, kung kanilang, kaya nilang i-defend ang magbigay sila ng more than a year na income tax holiday, so okay naman po. Kasi wala naman magre-reklamo per se. Kasi uh, napakalaking pakanabang po to sa isang private sector, sa isang investor. Uh, yun na. Yun. So, uh, kasi ginagawa ng LGU nga na pang ano po ito pang attract sa investor kaya ginagawa nilang more than a year so syempre wala namang magpo-question sa inyong lii kasi approved by higher sa gunian so yun po so if kaya ng LGU na magbigay ng one year if kaya niyo naman more than five more than one year not dependent na po yun sa inyo what uh, ko ano po yung discussion ng LGUs po doon pero kung tatanungin niyo sa BLGF ah uh, one year lang po ang panila. Pero there are LGUs nga po na more than five years yung binibigay nila income tax salary. Kasi siguro malaking income yung nadadala uh, naman ng, ng ano na yon ng investor na yon Kaya nagbibigay sila ng more than one year. Tapos uh, both for tax exception and for tax incentive, pareho pong may ordination. So, ang basihan nga natin kanina, kanina po nag-discuss ni Lian yung laman ng liik. So, yun, through liik po yung ordinance na ginibigay natin sa tax incentive. Doon sa tax incentive, sa liik po kasi nag-identify tayo ng investment priority area. So, so, ibig sabihin, yung mga type of industry na nandun sa priority areas nyo, eto lang yung bibigyan nyo ng tax incentive. Diba? So, kaya ang sundan po natin. Kasi, Kung nagbigay kayo ng tax incentives, ng fiscal incentives, doon sa wala naman sa investment priority areas yun. Parang, yun, parang may problema po tayo doon sa lease na yun, di ba? Kaya nga sa sinasabi natin, ito lang bibigyan namin ng tax incentives pag pumasok yung mga type of investor na. Yan. So, sa business, incentives granted according to LGU type sa business, pwede magbigay si city, pwede magbigay si municipality and si barangay. Pero pag real property, sand, gravel, and other quarry resources, ang pwede lang magbigay ng incentives si province lang sa kasi city. So si municipalities, hindi pwede magbigay ng incentive pag, the, pag ang businesses ay related sa real property, sand, gravel, and other quarry. Ganon din po sa idle land, mga real property, transfers, printing and publication, delivery bonds and trucks franchises, uh, ang incentive na pwede lang magbigay si Fravis sa kasi cities po. So, si municipalities and parangay, hindi pwede. For amusement places, province and cities lang po ang pwede magbigay ng fiscal incentives and community tax po si cities and municipalities lang ang, ang pwede magbigay ng fiscal incentives. Yan. Ang mga exceptions sa fiscal incentives, pag yung mga uh, katulad po ng mga regulatory fees, yung per, business permit fee, uh, yun po, yung mga sinisingil natin for business permitting, uh, ano pa ba, yung sini, for barangay clearance fee, wag nyo naman ibigay as in tax incentive po yun sa ating mga investor. So, yun, common issues raised, ordinance provides more than one year of availment for period of incentives. So, sabi ko nga sa BLGF po, one year lang, hanggang maaari. Tapos, kung nasa discussion na ng LGU, kung gusto nyo, uh, wala pa naman po atang nakakasuhan pag nagbigay kayo ng more than one year of availment kasi wala pa naman nagre-reklamo dahil pabor na pabor ito sa isang, ano, sa isang investor, sa isang private sector. Yun, you can, depende na po yun sa inyo. Kung gano'n nyo katagal siya, 
to subigyan na king capital provided you will give it to new investment nung wala pa sa inyo. And then, uh, incentives are granted to existing enterprises operating within the LGU and incentives on fees and charges. So, yun po. Ito yung kanamihin ng ini-issue. Kasi yung ibang kwan, kahit existing na yung kanilang ano, yung kanilang mga enterprises doon, hindi nga yung investment, pinibigyan pa rin nila ng, ng tax, ng fiscal incentives. So, yun po. Tapos, uh, misan yung yung hindi nila pinagpabayad ng business permit, di ba? Uh, example sa pag na business permit for a one year, mga ganun po. So yung mga fees and charges, wag mo natin isasacrifice to give us fiscal incentives. So incentives is uh, fiscal incentives is very crucial in promoting environmental investment, creating new jobs and resulting in other local economic benefits po. Siyempre, uh, the more na alagaan natin yung investor na lalo na yung bago, siyempre, mas mag-expand yan, mag mag-retain siya ng business niya dyan, di ba? Pwede siya magtayo ng branches within your within the province of Palawan, di ba? Hindi lang sa Puerto Princesa, baka pumunta pa ako sa ibang lugar ng ng Palawan. So, mga ganon, kung masyad, kung, uh, uh, kung bibigyan natin kahalaga yung ating mga investors. Incentives should be designed as performance-based, regularly quantified and monitored, time-bound and transparent, and in accordance with the LGU's financial capacity and spending priorities. Yun. So, marami po kasi nagbibigyan ng in in incentives, pero hindi naman tinitayo. Kumbaga, nalulugi na pala si LGUs, wala na palang na-earn the revenue, lalo na pag five-year five income tax holiday binigay nyo. So, dapat tingnan nyo din yung financial capacity ng LGU. Kung, kung hindi kayo makakakolek ng income tax for the for five years, oh, baka tapos mag-duda down yung, yung financial capability, uh, wag nyo naman bigyan ng five years income tax, di ba? Kasi hindi naman pala kaya ng inyong LGU. Yun. Incentives should be closely watched to ensure fairness, efficiency, and revenue performance. Bakit kayo nagbibigay income tax holiday? Kasi uh, gusto nyo makuha sa investor dahil may malaki siyang magagawa sa, sa locality, sa LGU nyo. But syempre, titinan din natin yung kanilang capacity. Tapos titinan nyo din kung uh, imamonitor din natin yung mga binibigay natin incentive sa kanila. Di ba? So para at least uh, uh, aware tayo na Ah, masyado palang matagal na to, diba? Sabi nga, dapat time-bound ang incentives. Yun. So, kung masyado namang five years or eight years income tax holiday ang ibibigay natin sa kanila, baka masyado nang lugi si LGU. Kaya, yun, uh, kailangan natin i-monitor para at least, uh, uh, tumbaga, yung financial liquidity natin ang kailangan natin tingnan. So, yun, yun lang po kasi, uh, Uh, yung gusto niyo magpa-review po sa ng liit, lalo na mga fiscal incentives na binibigay natin sa ating mga investors, uh, pati, pwede tayong magpa, magpa-assist sa Bureau of Local Government Finance within your region po. So, they could help you for the, the, the sa fiscal incentives. Yun nga, yung iba nga, uh, mas maganda ng fiscal. There's, uh, there's an LGU po, uh, province po ito na ginagawa nila Uh, kasi may department store din. May gusto din siya makuha department store dun sa kanila, itayo dun sa ano nila, dun sa lugar nila. So, ang ginawa po ng LGU, uh, yung walang kakompetensya for the period of five years. Ibig sabihin, sabihin natin, for example, di ba, department, uh, SM and Robinson, for example. Eh, si LGU, gusto niya makuha si, si SM. Ngayon, ang ginawa niya, ang ginawa, instead of giving fiscal incentives to SM, ang ginawa na lang niya po, uh, sabi niya, walang kakompetensya si SM for the period of five years sa kanilang LGU. So, ibig sabihin, kahit gusto niya makuha si Robinson, hindi niya muna kukunin si Robinson sa loob ng limang taon. Pag medyo established na si SM doon sa lugar nila, sa kanya kukunin si Robinson. So, yung mga ganong bagay po. Meron din po sa province of Negros Oriental, na nagbigay din ng incentives sa isang, uh, kasi kung gusto nila mak makarating na BPO, uh, yung mga call center, doon sa kalilang LGUs. So ang ginawa po ni, ni, ano, ni province of Negros Oriental, uh, sa loob ng tatlong taon, uh, wala munang ibang call center 
uh, office na papasok sa province of Next, sa Dumaguete City kasi na yun yung capital ng Marcos Oriental. So, wala mo nang papasok na uh, BPCO company, BPO company dun sa kanilang Dumaguete City. So, yun nga. Eh kaso, wala pang three years, may pumapasok na pong another BPO company dun sa Marcos Oriental. So, nila ang ginawa nila, instead of building it in the Dumaguete City, nilagay nila sa adjacent na uh, municipality po. So at least, yung mga ganong incentives eh, matutuwa na kasi no competition na. So the, the existing investors, kung baga mag-establish muna siya for the log, no, log ng tatlong taon, then after two years, saka siya magkakaroon ng competition siya, di ba? So mga ganong incentives, so pwede natin ibigay. Yan yung mga non-fiscal na sinatawag po natin na pwede natin ilagay sa ating liit. Yung mga assistance na mga ganon. Tapos meron din pong local government units na uh, with this department store kasi puro local uh, department store lang doon sa kanilang LGU. So ang ginawa niya, uh, ang gusto niya makuha itong si big department store din. So uh, sabi niya, uh, Sige, hindi kita ilalagay sa within the city. Within the city po, hindi niya ilalagay yung, yung investor na yun. Kasi gusto gusto niya makuha yung no, department store na yun. So, ilalagay kita sa taas, yung malapit sa airport. So, is, mga ilang minuto lang sa airport na po. Uh, so, at least may market ka. Pero ang um, sabi nga ng, siguro, ang sabi ng investor, kung doon mo ko dadalhin, kasi yung, yung airport ng LGU, na doon sa bandang bundok, So kung doon mo ko dadalhin, sino market ko? Hindi na malahat ng gagawag airport ay dadaan sa akin. So ang, ang ginawa po ng LGU, inayos niya po yung lugar. So if, anong ibig sabihin ang inayos ng lugar? Nagda, nilagay niya yung isang eskwelahan banda doon sa lugar na yon na malapit doon sa pagtatayo ng department store. Inayos niya yung mga kalsada. So meron na pong shortcut doon sa lugar ngayon na papunta sa bagong airport doon sa area na yon Tapos Meron, nagtayo ng maraming subdivision. So, ilang subdivision po yung naitayo sa lugar. Kung baga, bago dumati si department store, maayos na po yung market niya. So, ilang, depa, ilang subdivision na nandoon, may school pa na nandoon, tapos may papuntang airport, may papunta pa sa other, other LGU, other provinces within that region po. So, yung mga ganong bagay. So, that's a type of incentive na pinigay ng, 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 ng city doon sa, sa department store. So, nung magtayo na si department store, may sure market na siya kasi nandun na yung mga residential ng mga residents ng mga subdivision na inayos po. So, mga uh, ganong market po. Tapos, uh, ngayon maganda na rin kasi may, kumbaga, may shortcutan na po yung lugar kasi sa papuntang bagong airport nga, may pwede na dumaan po doon. So, yung mga ganong bagay po na incentives para hindi lang tayo mag-focus sa fiscal. Kaya, kaya yung mga existing natin na uh, local businesses para uh, pabuhayan naman sila ng loob, di ba? Kasi wala naman sila income tax holiday na ibibigay sa kanila. So yung mga non-fiscal pwede po natin ibigay sa ating entity. So yun po. So for the fiscal incentives, you can uh, consult the Bureau of Local Government Finance kung Tama po ba yung mga fiscal incentive natin ibibigay? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Louie. Alright, so uh, tama po si Ma'am Louie. Actually po, we recently conducted for select uh, target LGUs po yung ating uh, recently po no, with uh, DAL, uh, with DOF, BLGF, Mimaro pa rin po. And you can always um, coordinate with us po if you need to reach out to them. Alright po. So, Ayun, uh, that's uh, going to be our uh, last session na po for today, no? Uh, para po sa ating participants and to our BLGDK uh, colleagues. So we'll be starting tomorrow po with the um run uh, running through po, no? Or yung overview po ng ating actual LEA template. And then to be followed by our workshop para naman po afresh sa mind natin no, yung ating mga kailangang uh, gawin. Pero at this point po, no? Meron po ba tayong questions for... Um, the last six sessions that uh, we learned po this today. Ayan, mukha, mukha pong very, uh, hindi, ano naman po, no? hindi naman po bago sa atin yung uh, mga napag-usapan natin today. No? Kaya rin po siguro medyo okay-okay uh, po po ang atin pong mga participants. Pero yun po, may anything po before po we uh, share some reminders for tomorrow? 
Ayan, pwede po kayo makapag-unmute po, ano? naka-on po yung feature na yan. You can unmute yourselves po. And para po dun sa mga wala pong audio, you can always use our uh, Zoom chat box po to raise concerns. Alright, so sige po. Uh, bigyan po natin ng siguro po two minutes for everyone to ano po, deal or no deal po <laughs> kung wala po ba kayong tanong. Pero yun nga po, no, very... I guess well-versed na rin naman po tayo dun sa mga reviewer na lang po talaga yung ating mga um, na-discuss po today. Okay. All right, sige po. Ayun ma'am, Louis, siguro po from our end na lang po may clarificatory question lang po kami uh, going into our um, next sessions po no, for tomorrow, which is yung actual discussion na nung liik template plus yung atin pong um, work plan in formulating or updating this uh, our liik nga po of, of our LGU. So, um, meron po bang review process na necessary prior po ng approval ng ating uh, liik? And if ever po, sino po yung kailangan mag-facilitate ng review po na ito? This is a, a ordinary ordinance naman tong liik eh, di ba? So, Ah, uh, yung proper tadam pa rin siya do sa proper na i-review ko ng higher sa kunian, di ba kung approve na sa local sa sa ano, local so tadam to sa province, di ba? Ang gaka-approve naman. So, ganun lang din po 'yun. So, if the LGUs, kung may existing naman sila, ah, uh, pwede nila update na lang yung kanilang requirement kung tinan at tinan nila yung investment priority areas na 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 identify nila before na kung functional pa pa to makukuha pa ba nila to kung if, kung kasi kung hindi sila gagawa din ng marketing strategy for this uh, investment priority areas wala din mangyayari kasi di ba so kahit pag ilagay nila yan sa liit na magbibigay sila ng mga incentives wala din naman silang marketing strategy for that wala din naman so yun so yun kung kailangan nila mag-update kung gusto, baka gusto nila palitan yung mga identified priority areas nila doon. So, it will depend on the needs of the LGUs and on their uh, comprehensive development plan. Diba? All right, Thank you very much po, Ma'am Louie. So, again po, last, uh, last tanong po no, sa ating mga participants. Aside po doon sa ating uh, mga initial po na napag-usapan, meron po ba tayong clarifications? Other things po that you want to share? Okay, can I ano po, get a thumbs yes. up? Ano Ay, sige po, ma'am. Kung sino sa ako magkatanong. Ah, sige po, ayan. Sino yung may mga diik na po dito sa LGUs na na-participate? Uh, uh, Palawan, Roahas, Calapan City. Pwede pong mag-grace kung sino na po yung may mga L may mga ano na po, uh, liik sa inyo. Sige, sige po, ma'am. Uh, ikutan po natin sila. Una po siguro from Calapan City. Ayan, meron na po ba tayong liik? You may chat po, no? Or use thumbs up po if if we want to signify po na meron na. Ayan. Kalapan City po. Kalap, kalap ma'am uh, Suzette po. Uh, kalap Sir Jerome po. Ayan. Sige po, you may, you may chat po. How about sa province of Palawan po? Meron na po ba tayong na-formulate previously? Ah, ayan. Nag-thumbs up po si, ano po, no? Sir Jerome. Meron daw po sa Kalapan City. How about sa province of Palawan po? Ayan. You, you may chat na lang po sa atin pong mga taga-PGP. Ayan. Kila Sir Romeo po. Kila, um... Kila Ma'am Maribel po, ang ating mga narinig na ginito ang boses kanina. Mer meron po ba tayong liik na po? Uh, ayun po, um, LG Rojas po, meron na rin po. Need na lang po for update. All right. Ayun. And uh, meron din po ditong feedback po. No? Supposedly po yung atin pong three LGU participants ay meron na nga rin daw po uh, according to our business-friendly Mimaropa LGU's website. 
Oh, okay, thank you. Kasi uh, mahalaga po talaga yung DIG, lalo na pag-update naman po. So, it will depend on the investment priority plan at the national government. Thank you, thank you. Ayan, so, review lang, review lang talaga. Ma- <laughs> ah, po, tama-tama po. Kaya rin po pala very, uh, mabilis po tayo no, na nakapag-proceed uh, sa ating sessions today. Talagang uh, this is a review for everyone na lang po. Yun po, hopefully ay uh, nakatulong pa rin po and uh, sort yes, of na-update. Ah, uh, yes po ma'am. Share ko lang yung ano, yung powers ng local government student na binigay sa LGU para yung tanong kanina sa mga band floating. So, ah, sige po, sige po. Oh, Wait lang. Sige, hanapin Sige, go, lang po na. go ahead lang po, Ma'am Bluey. Ayun po, while um, nagpe-prepare po ng ating material, remind lang po yung everyone po na as per our checking, uh, not all of our uh, LGUs and participants po have accomplished yung atin pong um, attendance form. Makikisuyo na lang po kami sa atin pong mga uh, field officers po no, from the respective LGUs to facilitate or help us po with the ano po, pagsagot. Ayan. Or pag uh, papa-answer po sa ating participants. Thank you very much po. So, ito, nakikita ni Chelsea? Yes po, ma'am. Ayan, oh. naka-flash na po. So, ito yung uh, powers ng LGUs at uh, bakit tayo gumagawa ng mga investment promotion sa kanyang local investment incentive. So, so yung section 17, uh, kasi yung Ano ba ba, for our hospital, kung sa tingin, siyempre kung run by the municipal or government hospital yan, uh, siyempre alam naman natin yung lagi tayo sa Procurement Act, di ba, 9184, bago natin, uh, bago tayo makabili ng mga supplies ng ating hospital, dadampa tayo sa, sa ano, sa, tawag dito, sa procurement law. So, matalang if we can do for public-private partnership to improve our hospital facilities, facility katulad ng ginawa sa Manila yung national kit nila so meron silang for na public private partnership uh, mura lang yung single for mga dialysis patient di ba so yun pwedeng natin for PPP so yan po yung section 17 at uh, improve our basic services facilities then ah uh, sa Roman 2 yung industrial research and development services as well as a transfer of appropriate technology and investment support services, including access to credit financing. So, eh, Section 18 naman, uh, power to generate and apply resources, local government should have the power and authority to establish an organization that shall be responsible for the efficient and effective implementation of their development plans, programs, objectives, and priorities. So, Kaya nga inaalog yung joint venture kasi nakalagay naman sa din sa local government units, uh, local government so that the LGU can enter into a joint venture agreement. Then to create their own sources of revenue and to live by tax, fees and charges which shall accrue exclusively for their use and disposition. So yun, uh, katulad ng Valenzuela, so the part, this pandemic po, uh, nagpili entered into a PPP with a molecular laboratories na uh, yung mga RT-PCR test, yung wala pang hindi pa gano'n kakalat sa mga laboratory yung pagpapa ng detect ng COVID. Kasi pag-partner na po ang, ang Valenzuela sa isang uh, private laboratory nga para lahat ng magpa-positive yun. So at least madali nilang madetect kasi yung positive sa Valenzuela. So yun, uh, wala namang binabayaran yung mga taga Valenzuela po for their COVID test. No? So yung mga ganong bagay po. Then, uh, you have your corporate powers as the Section 22. Uh, you can enjoy your full autonomy in the exercise of your, your proprietary functions in the management of your economic enterprise. Then, Section 192, you, yun nga, yung mga grant tax exemptions. So, iba po itong grant tax exemptions sa tax credit sa tax incentives ha so kasi may mga LGUs na sinasabi tax exempted pero ang ang minimin pala nila fiscal incentives kaya yon marami kung LGU yung patuwa ng ganun so yung wordings lang siguro ang nagkakaiba po kayo dapat don't use tax exemption to tax incentives pagkaiba po yon then section 299 
advance and long-term securities for uh, ito po subject to the rules and regulation of the Central Bank and the Securities Exchange Commission, provinces, cities, and municipalities are hereby authorized to issue. Pwede kayo mag-issue ng bonds, debenture, securities, collateral, loans, and other obligations to finance self-liquidator or income-producing development of livelihood projects. Po. So yan po. But uh, subject to the approval of Central Bank and Exchange Commission po. So mga rules and regulation nila po dito. So uh, you can defer or you can further inquire po sa Central Bank and check po. Then section 300 for interlocal government loans, grants, and subsidies. So the provinces, cities, and municipalities may con contract loan. So alam niyo naman po ito. So credit and other forms of indebtedness for purposes mutually beneficial to them. Then section 302, yung po yung financing, construction, maintenance, operation, and management of in your infrastructure project with the private sector. So yan po. So, ako po rin nakasama po kayo dyan yung nagkaroon tayong orientation sa public-private partnership. So, yun po. So, so, you can set up your investment centers, train your ledipos. Talagang kayang isetin natin ang ledipos pagdating po sa investment promotion. Appreciate the role of your private investment and its multiplier effect. Diba? So, once na magkaroon ng bagong investment sa lugar, uh, automatic po mag-hire ng job. Uh, yung Yung provision of workers is also uh, one of incentives na pwede natin ibigay sa ating, ano, sa ating private sector. So, uh, hopefully, uh, by next year, the DILG and DLGF can have a list of menu ng mga pwedeng incentives na ibigay ng isang LGUs. Hopefully, magawa po namin to next year para yung mamimili na lang kayo doon ng mga uh, pwedeng yung pagpilian ng mga fiscal and non-fiscal incentives na pwede natin ibigay sa ating private sector. And yun, uh, and other future revenue cash inflows so it can improve the social services and offer sustainable enterprises to the youth and decent jobs for one day like those. Kasi yung purpose na po natin dito, uh, CBOL, yung magiging topic natin for the next uh, remaining days po, uh, is of workforce po. So you will go into prepare the workforce development plan. So, kung kulang po yung mga employment generation sa lugar, you can do, baka pwede na naman tayong mag-market na ito pang investor na dadali natin po sa itong sa ating lugar. So, that's all. So, thank you. Alright. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Louie. So, alright. So, I think that's a fitting uh, way to end our uh, first day po, no? And a uh, summary of, uh, and the reason po, bakit nga po ba tayo or saan po nang gagaling no, yung ating pong taxing power. So, uh, for, with that last session po, meron po bang additional questions or insights po no, from our uh, participants? Ay, ay, yes po, thank you po sa PLG Palawan. Nag-respond po pala sila kanina na uh, needs updating din po yung kanilang LIEC. So, I believe po uh, all of our participants nga po have initially crafted their LIEC, but uh, would you can utilize po no, this activity uh, as a chance to update it po. Yung sa LIEC nga pala, kahit hindi na sila gumawa ng implementing rules and regulations, yung I, gagawa na naman ng IR kung hindi clear talaga sa ginawa nilang LIEC, di ba? If, if, sa tingin naman nila, yung LIEC nila ay okay na at na different consultation na naman nangyari, no need to fire IR, siguro updating lang. Yes po, which I believe po is uh, the most case, ay the ano po, no? Uh, gagawin po ng ating mga participants. Uh, you can, ano naman po, you can uh, give the details po of uh, those specific things tomorrow po sa ating workshop. Alright, so again po, no, last, last, last time po that I'll ask if meron po tayong questions and clarifications. And uh, yun po, okay na po ba tayo from Calapan City, Province of Palawan, and Rojas Palawan po. Can we get a thumbs up po or uh, chat po sa ating Zoom chat box if we're uh, goods na po for uh, our sessions today. Right, sige po. Um, mukha po talagang, um, yun nga po, sort of review lang rin po talaga itong ating uh, session today. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa Rojas Palawan for acknowledging. Thank you, thank you. Mukha nga po nag-serve lang po no, as a reviewer or, or as a refresher, refresher session yung ating pong um, day one. So maraming maraming salamat po talaga uh, 
First of all po, maraming salamat po sa ating mga DALG, uh, BLGD colleagues. Salamat po talaga sa uh, pag, uh, ano po, no, ng aming request for uh, sharing these things to our participants today. And thank you rin po sa ating po mga participants for being with us on e, uh, this busy Monday morning. Hopefully po, tomorrow po ay uh, mas maraming pa po tayong uh, makasama po, no, from our respective LGUs at yung ating nga po mga target uh, participants uh, from uh, our LGUs. So thank you, thank you very much everyone. Bigyan naman po natin ng round of applause ang atin po mga sarili for um, successfully finishing the day one of um, our... <laughs> Ayan po, pampagising lang po saglit before po tayo mag-hiwa-hiwalay. Ah, Alright, so bigyan po natin ng ating uh, mga sarili ng round of applause para po sa pagtatapos ng maayos at matiwasay ng ating day one. So before po tayo officially na talaga mag- um, ano po, hiwa-hiwalay ng landas as uh, for today ay i- Nilagay lang po namin ulit yung atin pong required logout attendance sa atin pong Zoom chat box. So this time po, November 22 pa rin po yung ating pipiliin pero logout naman na po. So wala naman po yung further questions na diretso submit na po yung ating logout uh, for today. So ayun po, thank you very much. And yung atin din pong training toolkit uh, will be uh, populated na po or we will upload na yung ating mga materials na nagamit natin sa sessions 1 to 6 natin as well as relevant documents uh, from today, dyan po sa ating toolkit para po ready na tayo sa mga sessions natin tomorrow. Okay? So again po, um, this is uh, LGO03 Chasita Mayo from the DLG Mimaropa and thank you very much po talaga everyone for being with us today. So salamat po at kita-kita po tayo bukas. Same Zoom link po and uh, 9 a.m. po ulit tayo officially magsastart and hopefully po we get to see uh, more participants from our LGUs. Thank you very much po everyone and have, uh, uh, have a good day or have a good Day for the rest of your afternoon. Okay, sige po. Salamat, salamat. Ingat po tayo lahat. Yay!